On today's part in my take, we've got our good friends Taylor Luan and Will Compton in studio, the Bussin' with the Boys boys. Uh, great interview with them. Touch everything. Uh, we also have some conference finals set. So Hank is going to be on Zoom. He was on the wood, on the floor for the Celtics beating the Bucks in Game 7. We're also taping this at halftime of the Mavs Suns because we're calling it. We're calling it. It could be a historic what? comeback, but we are calling it. This the game Suns over. are cooked. That's Absolutely oh cooked. So we have all of that. Before we get to that, though, uh, we are brought to you by our friends at Visible. When it comes to saving on wireless, Visible wins every time. Other wireless carriers hit you with costly monthly bills, tricky extra fees, and unwanted add-ons. The competition doesn't stand a chance. The choice is obvious. Visible. You can shell out $60 or more a month with other mobile car carriers or pay as little as $25 a month for single-line uh, wireless with Visible. You can get cornered into a family plan by other guys to try and save or... You save solo on a single line with Visible. You can pay extra fees every month on another mobile plan, or you can pay no extra fees with Visible. Switch to Visible at Visible.com slash pod and get unlimited single line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Comparison to a single line with unlimited data at other major car carriers. For plan and network details, see Visible.com slash pod. Get the best possible wireless out there with Visible. Thank you to Visible for being our presenting sponsor. Go to Visible.com slash pod and get unlimited single line wireless for as low as $25 a month. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part of My Take, presented by Visible.com slash pod. Get unlimited single wire line wireless for as low as $25 a month when you go to Visible.com slash pod. Today is Monday, May 16th, and the Suns are dead, the Mavericks are alive, the Celtics are alive, and the Bucks are dead. All right, so little, little caveat here. We are taping this at the halftime. Right now, the score is Luka Doncic, 27, the Phoenix Suns, 27. Chris Paul, 1. <laughs> it's all, it's actually so much funnier that Chris Paul only has one point than yeah. if he had zero points at half. Yes, one point is hard to do. Um, Listen, PFT, we, we know ball. He's downloading the information. Second <laughs> half, he's going to be going off. He's plugged in. He's going to figure out. He, they're just, he's just updating it right now. He's updating the code back in, in the locker room. When he comes out, it's over for the Mavs, but... This is we decided to do this at halftime because either one we look smart by saying the the Suns are deader than dead and this is an embarrassing performance game 7 at home or we will get to relive this as the dumbest thing we've ever done when they come back and have the craziest victory of all time. I don't think it's that dumb. I mean, let's say no, I don't let's either. say that Chris Paul hypothetically uh, quadruples his output from the first half yeah. and he ends up with How five points that? on the game <laughs> total. Uh, yeah, they're done. These Suns are cooked. The sun has expired. The Suns, to paraphrase my good friend Meek Mill, the Suns is a disgrace. Ooh. They're a disgrace. I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to use a hard D bomb. What's a that? disgrace. What's that, Hank? A fraud. Oh. I love Meek Mill. Sean okay, Meek so yeah. so so here's what we'll do. We'll, let's let's talk Celtics first, then we'll revisit after we watch the first five minutes of the, of the third quarter. But the Suns are done. They're cooked. I've never seen. I, and credit to the Mavs, by the way. The Mavs came out with great energy. Spencer Dinwiddie was just hitting every shot. I do think it's a combo of like the Mavs playing great, but also the Suns forgetting how to like touch a basketball. It, um, the way that they're playing basketball right now is very strange. It's, it's real strange. It's like Chris Paul. He tries to run a pick and roll, dribbles into a double team, kicks it out like directly backwards to Jay Crowder, and hopes that Jay Crowder just fills it up. That's it, that's what their game plan is right now. Shocking, it's not working. Luka Doncic is like straight up like tearing them limb from limb, crossing like, over everyone, easily, and he's doing the 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 smug little Luka uh, smirks. I kind of love I, it. I don't think anybody has a more condescending smirk besides Hank Lockwood. Yes, than Luka Doncic does. Like he's he's boxing out on free throws and like winking at the foul shooter. <laughs> yes, while shooting yes. It. It's it's very disrespectful what he's doing. This, this uh, our good friend Sam Schwartzstein actually pointed out that Spencer Dinwiddie has been playing like a fucking maniac since Bitcoin crashed. Oh, and his entire contract got converted into crypto. 
uh, this year. So he's out there. He knows he has to get another big contract. He's he's really in trouble right now. Yeah, he knows yeah. he's got to he's got to try to get one max deal. The over Sun, his career. The Suns are playing like they have Chris Paul and four James Hardens in a game seven. That's how they're playing right Wait, now. Wait, but what's the conversion rate of a playoff Chris Paul to a playoff James Harden? Because well, I, I feel like that's like Stanley Nichols to shoot balls. Yeah, well, and it's also a Chris Paul that was up 2-0 in a series, and I think this would be now the fifth time. And and I know there's injuries in there and everything, and there's all these different, but I think it would be the fifth time a Chris Paul-led team had, was up 2-0 in a series and ended up losing that series. I think we need to actually take a step back and rewind through history, go back to when the Chris Paul to the Lakers trade didn't happen because David Stern nixed it. Mm -hmm. I think David Stern accurately knew, like, hey, the league's better when the Lakers are winning championships. Yes. I'm not going to let this trade go through just because I know that they'll never win a ring when Chris, Chris Paul's Paul, on the team. I think, is... it, I think it wasn't a matter of making a super team that made him step in and, and put the kibosh on I think he actually saved the NBA. A triumph for guys like us who just live on narratives, mm -hmm. and we don't want to give up narratives because they're fun. And look, we know Chris Paul's good, but is he? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's well, the question that should lead all debate shows on Monday. <laughs> Chris Paul is literally the best NBA player of all time. That is sucked. I we we actually were debating whether we could call Rasillo tonight. I don't think we can. I think this is going to be a fracture in our relationship for a while. I think we got to wait a couple weeks. <laughs> I, at least. I think we're going to have to do. I think I'm going to have to have another kid, and we're going to have to have another <laughs> life episode, and like sit down and just be like, uh, "Here's a tip." Don't get too committed to one player who's 37 years old and chokes in the playoffs all the time. I think I might have to go adopt a child <laughs> to to save our relationship with him. I'll name him Chris, and I'll get I'll get Ryan to help me raise him. Yeah, yeah. Ryan would be like, is, "Oh, that's my son's name too." Is, Great. Is is Ryan? Is he a Celtics fan? Yes. So that's that's probably we'll have to wait until after the Celtics get to the finals and just let him talk about how great his Celtics. Yes, are. but this is uh, it's going to be tough. We'll be touch and go for a while. We'll try to have him on at some point in the rest of the playoffs, but. It w this will be a like I'll text text him in a few days, being like, "Hey, that that'll be it." Like just a hey, you're just not, a, you're, just you're a, not gonna text him tonight. No, I already texted him. I texted him oh, in, yeah. the in the second it's quarter. No I was like, "Hey, chin up, dude. He's just he's just he's just getting ready to go off." Um, I was like, "Long game," but all right, let's talk about the game that is final. The Celtics beat the Bucks. Hank was there on the wood. Uh the Bucks, it, it, you know, incredible series. Incredible series goes seven. The Bucks decided uh, to galaxy brain game seven, saying, "Let's just leave Grant Williams open, who's a forty percent shooter from three. He's not a bad. He's a good shooter from three. They left him open all day. He tied the record for most threes in a game seven with seven. Um, that was that was wild. Hank, why don't you tell us? I'll, I'll let you just go wherever you want to go uh, with your spaz celebrations. Just go off." <laughs> I mean, we can we can get into the spaz celebrations. It was an unbelievable experience. Great hospitality shown by the Celtics sitting courtside. Obviously, is it, uh, it was wild, wild sitting there. Grant Williams, but it was one of those things where they left him wide open, and every time it, it wasn't they weren't bad shots. It was like he has to be shooting these. He's missing them, but he just needs to keep shooting them because he's wide open. They're not guarding him. Yeah. So he attempted 18 threes in this game. Uh, but none of them were no, bad shots. No, they were, they were, they were all like they were relatively bad. wide open. There's it's, there's only one player that's ever attempted more threes in a playoff game. Any guesses? Mm. James Harden, yeah. Russell Westbrook. Oh, Russell okay. Westbrook on well, a he's night gotta shoot. on a night that he put up 43 total shots yeah. and they still lost. That was that was the the record. It still stands, but only by one. I think he had 19 attempts. It was. Um, it was a clinic. It was the Grant Williams game. And yeah. You have to ask yourself, did Hank's presence at courtside, like when LeBron plays so well because Drake's there watching him, was Grant like, you know what, I'm, I'm Team Hank. I got to put on a show for my boy. Yeah, I was in these guys' ears. Marcus Smart came over afterwards. We were sitting next to his agent, came over, took a picture. Great guy. I got a it question was, I mean, about was, that. I got a question yeah. about that. Yep. Uh, there's a picture. You can find it online. Uh, Hank and Dave. Marcus Smart's Marcus Instagram Smart, posted it. No yeah, big deal. Marcus Didn't Smart posted me, it. All right. Dave did point out on the Twitter that um, he said that you should take your shirts off. What happened there? Because he, I'll tell you one thing. That picture would be 10 billion times funnier if you both had your shirts off as well. Oh, easily. I would have. And I could have shown the six pack. That, he said that after the fact. That was like a, that was a post mostly comment. That wasn't uh, got he, it. It was like he said it. I was like, yeah, we should have. That would have been hilarious. But it wasn't okay. It was a kind of a, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. The celebrations, obviously, you know, when you're on when you're in the wood, like you know, you guys know how it is. We do streams. People see you celebrating. Yeah, when you're in the wood. Yeah, 
I was, that was just like, that was just a, that was as raw emotion as you could possibly have. Like right. it wasn't thought right. about. I wasn't like, I'm going to pump my fist. It was just like correct excitement leaving my body and simultaneously through both of my hands. I have and, no problem with it. Though. Yeah. I think like that's, it was beautiful to watch. Was, I know that you're, <laughs> you're self-conscious about, it, but I don't think that you should be. Happy. I'm not. No, no, you are, you? no, you're definitely, oh, you definitely, definitely are. Yeah, you no, absolutely, you're, you're so triggered <laughs> yeah, by it. You tweeted it after. Can I tell you actually? You um, tweeted it at me. Well, yeah, because it was, it was shocking. I mean, what, like what dude, we remember when, when PFT, all right, you describe crap, it, then you describe it. You like did, I described it. All right, you describe you, it for the listeners. You tried to do, and you can find it. We'll, we'll put it in the YouTube. What is this? <laughs> Hank tried to do a double <laughs> fist pump and kind of like a double flail <laughs> kick. Someone actually nailed it. You look like one of Balmer's cronies when they were doing the like get on your feet sh dance well, and like that's doing micro like Windows ninety seven was getting in that, introduced. That's the old Donald Trump. Yeah, or the yeah, Mexican double. soccer coach. Yeah, but it was like you lost all control of your body. <laughs> and um, can I tell you? I did. The call. Can I tell you that th this is going to hurt you because the call came from within the house when I, when I when I when I keyed in on you celebrating i got tipped off to it by by a close associate sometime in the second quarter who memes nope <laughs> stanford steve texted me oh, he was boy. like we gotta work on hank's fist pumps and no, i was it's, like what it's fine I and like then it. i started watching i was like what is he doing he's trying to pull off a double fist pump that's never been done before Hank, i know i know you're thinking to yourself probably man i looked like such a nerd i'm so embarrassed what a bad I visual for me. No. I wish I, no one had ever seen no. this. But Not hey, I, I don't have a problem with it. I think that you're Man in the arena. Man in the wood you're, arena. You're supposed Man in the wood. You're, you're supposed to look like an absolute freak when you're yeah. sitting courtside. I would be concerned if you didn't celebrate like a complete and total dork. Like that that tells me that you're a real fan. Yeah, and it also was a perfectly Hank, normal Hank, celebration. Hank, it kind of works too because they had like it if did. you were someone who was watching and you had no idea what Barstool was, they have Team Hank on the Jumbotron in the second quarter, <laughs> then you spazzing out, they're like, This this guy's got like two weeks to live. It's great. He's enjoying the hell out of his uh. time. Yeah, listen, I just I like I think I said it on the show the other day. I, I'm in denial about that part of it because I I was Thinking about it, I'm like, it's just ridiculous that people are just like being like Team Hank for no fucking reason. Like they're <laughs> asking, like, why are they saying this? I'm like, I don't really know how to explain it, and I'm just not going to. Right. Just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna block that part out of it mm -hmm. and just focus on the good parts. Focus on listen, yeah, you make fun of my celebration, which was perfectly normal, but if that's the if that's the price I have to pay for a victory in game seven on the wood, I'll do it all day. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is in in reality, like you've been on a very hot streak recently, so uh, us sitting on our couch making fun of your celebration. I think we we deserve this. We yeah. deserve. We got to take. Otherwise, we wouldn't be. Hey, you're reaching a little bit, but that's fine. Oh, it was that's not a reach, right. dude. Hank, it, no. You jumped out of the screen. You were. I thought you were gonna collapse. Hank, sing, <laughs> sing like nobody's listening. Live like it's heaven on you earth. To, you can't Love even clap. like you've never won before. <laughs> Dance we like no one's watching. I actually said that when I came in. I you was literally like, can't even clap. I've been working on my claps. My claps are totally fine now, but it took some bad film for me to improve on it. So I was, it was a good thing. In fact, I thank I thank God every morning that I wake up that that bad visual of me clapping like I don't know, like my my hands were butterfly <laughs> wings. I'm glad that came out there because I got to improve on it. I got right. to watch my own film. You should look at this as a learning. What would Tom Brady say? Stop. Yeah, yeah. he'd probably That's say true. like, That's true. "I learn more from my mistakes than I do from my accomplishments." Yeah. So you've got you got a lot to learn today. Yeah. No more double fist pumps. And, and again, Hank, you. I mean, you're you're on a hot streak. You just got to sit on the wood to watch your team win a game seven where they were like that had to have been one of the best sporting events you've been to because it was it was never in doubt. It basically. The the game, I don't want to say it turned, but when when Marcus Smart stole the ball from Giannis with like a second left in the second quarter, and then they called the the shooting three from half court, it was like from that moment on, it was the Celtics romp. The Celtics played like absolute dirt in the first quarter, and the fact that they made it out of the first half up by five, that like that's a hundred percent true. Where it's like they played really really bad and won the half by five points, like. If they just play decent, they're going to win, and that's what they did. They dominated. I, I did have a lot of – And Giannis, Giannis was missing. He missed like five layups in the second – He did. In the third quarter. He did. I had a lot of NBA like rig wide open layups. In, that, in, the first, in the first half, it did seem like there were some there were some very sketchy calls going on. Like oh they, they were trying to work against the Celtics. I, I would agree with somebody that 
uh, if you're rooting for Boston, you were watching that first half, it seemed a little more than a little fishy. But then at some point in the second half, it almost felt like the refs figured out, like, well, we can't keep this one close. There's yeah. just, it's just not able to happen. And it was it was essentially the Bucks needed just anyone to step up for them, and they just didn't have anyone who stepped up. Like it was, it, and it, you know what's so weird is I was I was looking at it, Giannis. I don't think anyone would argue at this point. Giannis is the best player in the world. Like he, he, he the series he put on was incredible. He had yeah, like a triple double in the first quarter. He had two hundred basically he, in seven games. He had two hundred thirty seven points, one hundred and three rebounds, and fifty assists. Like that's just stupid. So I don't think anyone would argue that it wasn't like they 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 acquitted themselves as as well as a defending champ could do and I'm not even going to get in the Chris Middleton injury because you can't talk about like what are you going to do like he's injured what like what are you going to say um it, it's just crazy to think of like how much he did and how much he just needed one guy one or two guys which actually brings me to a point Hank is the brotherhood dead because Grayson Allen was so bad he had such big like I shouldn't be here energy and he airballed the three in the second quarter, and you were up his ass. I was watching. Uh, <laughs> you were up his ass. So is the Brotherhood dead? Is the Duke Brotherhood dead? I mean, Brotherhood, Brotherhood's forever, but it's like, you know, when you when you change – it's only when you're wearing the jersey. Let's be honest. Okay. It's only when you're wearing the jersey. If you're okay. wearing the jersey, it's Brotherhood, but if you're wearing the opposing team's jersey and I'm on the wood and, and you airball it, I'm going to let you hear it. Did you find him after the game to try to do a handshake line with him? <laughs> no, no. You were giving them the they, business. They, they walked right off. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I guess I, I like people were sending me a lot of videos. I, I was vocal. It was one of those things. It's like you know, when you're on the wood, you're involved in the game. You're basically like the sixth man. Can we talk real quick? Uh, other pieces, important pieces of the game. Um, piss break in the first quarter. What happened there? Uh, I got pretty pretty drunk last night. Woke up today. Had a, had a couple drinks in the morning. So I was definitely like my bladder was was. It, I needed to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't uh, it took me a little while to get into, you know, game mode. I had to really play play my way into it. It was Got a glaring, it. glaring absence on yeah. the sideline, though. Yeah, like, it, it stuck out like a sore thumb. And that's actually but I, it was it was one of those things where I was, you know, listen, I was I was I, got, I sat down in the seats and I in my head, similar to the jail shit story that people always trip me for. I was like, I have to pee, but I'm going to wait till the end of the first half. But I was so uncomfortable that I was like. It's going to be awkward. I'm probably going to get chirped for it, but I'm going to be 10 times more comfortable once I'm finished. It had to be done. By the way, quick update. The uh, Mavericks are now up 41 Holy points. Holy 41 shit. 41 points. Disgusting. I think we made the Holy right choice. Suns is a disgrace. Can they Can they actually Holy throw shit. in the white towel? Can Can the Suns actually just quit? I'm telling you, you guys are going to bonk me for it, but they needed AJ Titties at halftime. <laughs> Yes, we are going to bother you. She yeah. Did, she yeah, did. both things can be true. It, yeah, both I mean, things can listen, be true. I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of being bonked for telling the truth. And call me horny if you must, but they need to get sucked off. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is horrific. I don't know what you – let's see. Let's just get a quick update on the Chris Paul stat line. I Chris, think he's still got one point. He's got three points. Oh, three points, all right. Three points, two assists, one rebound. Stat stuffer. He's got to be doing a bit, right? I, I feel think, like – I think Giannis had that stat line. 45 seconds into the game it's, today. It's ridiculous what Chris Paul is doing right now. You've got you've got uh, Murr, Q, and Sal backstage, like whispering into earphones, being like, "Okay, now <laughs> now throw the ball, throw the ball off JaVale McGee's knee out of bounds." It also, I mean, Bob Ryan hates this NBA, but it does prove that like you DeAndre Ayton has also been bad, and DeAndre Ayton is you you have you have to have five guys that can play at the three point line. In a series, you know what I mean. It's just, like it's just, you can't, you can't play with the center. I'm offended. I'm offended. And going into this game, I texted the group chat this, trying to get what the vibes were. I was betting on the Suns, and I said I'm also betting the over on Chris Paul points. And I was like, not at for seventeen me. and a half. And I was doing it mostly so that I would be, I would, I would be saving myself either way. So one, if he did get the over, boom, my bet hits. I'm happy about that. If he gets the under, then it really fuels. It gets me more amped up about my anti Chris Paul stance. Right. And so th it did the trick. Right. I'm 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 literally angry at Chris Paul right now. It, it is it's nuts. This is a shocking shocking game. Game 7 at home and you're down 39 now. They just cut the lead. They're on a 2-0 run. You never hear somebody say like they laid an egg in basketball. It's more of a football term. Chris Paul is is laying an egg right now. This is I do you blow up blow up the Suns? I got you got to. I don't know what like this is a loss that will haunt you. I want, yeah, I wonder what, what uh, Brian Cox would say about whether or not you could actually do that. Yeah. 
What? Uh, can I do a quick Monday reading? Yeah. Uh, Billy Football just tweeted this 16 seconds ago. He said, Suns, question mark, more like moons because they're playing ass out terrible. <laughs> Nailed oh, it. It's good, yeah. Billy. I like that. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it's going to do numbies. <laughs> Is the opposite of the sun the moon, though? I don't think so. 100%. No, but yeah, well, moon, yeah, for us. The moon but ass like, out. Yeah, I like it. In At the mooning. In terms yeah, of the funny. universe, what is the opposite of the sun? A black, black hole. hole. Yeah. Black hole sun. This is a singularity. Yeah. Bonk. Um, Hank, we need now need to turn turn our attention. By the way, one last thing about Grant Williams. I'll tell you what, I'm, they're not playing like Jupiter. Or shit, I fucked that up. Damn. Like, rewind. Tell you what, Uranus. Tell you what, big cat, they're not playing like Saturn. Nice. Because they got no rings. Nice. Just pretend Jupiter, I didn't fuck Jupiter that up. Jupiter have rings? Huh? Jupiter has moons? I think Jupiter has maybe a small ring. A technical I, ring. Like a bubble ring. Like, yeah. They've right. got, yeah, they've, they, they've they got the Mickey Mouse. The Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Right, right, right. Drop some Jupiter. Great song. Um, <laughs> Tell me. Do, 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 fall from the shooting star. Should do Mount Rushmore planets. We should have a guy. Do. By the way, I have a, I have a uh, Mount Rushmore idea that popped in my head. Now we're getting just sideways. I have I wrote down a couple too, but well, sorry. no, I have an idea for how we should do Mount Rushmore this year. Oh boy, yeah, I think we should go. I think we should go teams because Billy and Jake are sitting next to each other. We could have the producer team and me and PFT team up, and we go. I love so that. that way. There's three pick three three teams pick each time, mm -hmm. but it's teams. I like that. I yeah. think it would be. Should, I think it'd be a nice variation for us. And we should we should give ourselves names. Yeah, and, and jerseys and jerseys and sell shirts. I just I just like you know I'm just gonna throw it out there like you guys are obviously the, old the, most two, mm -hmm. the two most valuable people like what happens when you guys are just getting like i don't know hank we haven't been you know, on the run out of the building recently uh right. are we a super team are you guys no we're, i'm worried about the are podcast big cat and me bad for over, mount rushmore over, <laughs> no you guys being bad i think no, it I'm be saying, good. Like, you guys are going to be so bad that you're going to like all, there's going to be like dissension between you two uh, i don't I think we're going to be bad i think we're actually going to find out very quickly that we are just dominant Left and right. We'll I mean, we've we'll seen see. Jake and Billy together. That team doesn't work whatsoever. All right. Team, more, team Hubble was a wagon. Team Hubble was around. Yeah. They won the pizza draft. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Don't never no. forget the pizza draft. Um, <laughs> that, okay. that was actually an, that was the birth of the Team Hank movement. Yeah, it was, was was the pizza draft. <laughs> Double no, all never forget. And it goes in its down in its worst place then. Uh all right, let's let's move We've on moved though. On from those days. To to the more important pressing uh topic now, and we're gonna talk NHL after the busting with the boys. So we're gonna do all hockey talk then. Uh Hank, you now have to face your greatest foe of your life. It's the only person who can just beat you left and right, up and down, and there's nothing you can do about it. He's your kryptonite. It's Jake Marsh. So what 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 are your thoughts going into this? Uh, Eastern Conference Final now with Jake Marsh looking at you across the way and just smiling and being like, I hope we just have a good time. Yeah, I mean, this is bubble revenge. My thoughts, honestly, and this is going to make it worse. It's going to be a colder take if they end up losing, but I do think the Celtics are a better team. Like, I think this should be a, a five or six game series oh, win. Oh, wow. And I just, you know, heat culture, all that shit. But that was, you know, even the bubble, like the Celtics team is a much different team than they were in the bubble. They're way better. The Heat are basically the same, if not worse. Yes. Rangers so scored. I feel oh nice. I oh, feel uh, I feel I feel extremely confident about this game. So about this series. Yeah, I, I I would not feel confident ever going up against Jake Marsh because he's a winner. He'll smile, he'll laugh, he'll apologize for beating you as he slits your throat. It's just it's so much worse losing to Jake at anything. And I, oh, I, I would know. be very, very afraid if I were you. I would definitely not be making declarations. It sounds like you're declaring a possible whomping. You said five or six games. That's a potential whopping. That is a potential whopping. I also would just like to say, you know, it's just such a shame, such a shame that it's not the Sixers. Like, if they were as good as they claimed to be all year, everyone was talking all that shit, and they were in the Eastern Conference Finals, and this was Boston versus Philadelphia for a chance to go to the finals, it'd be unbelievable. By the way, not to to just rip the the wound, the fresh gaping wound that the Sixers have, but um, the one little fun fact that comes out of uh Ime Udoka going to the Eastern Conference Final. This is now three assistant coaches the Sixers had. They're the new Washington Redskins. Three, sorry, Commanders. They had three assistant coaches in the last seven years that have gone to a conference final. So obviously Mike D'Antoni, he's he three? He, yeah, he was on the staff in 2015, 2016. He went to the Western Conference Final with the Rockets. 
Uh, Monty Williams, coach of the Suns, who now is laying an egg, was on the staff. He he went to the Western Conference Finals, went to the Finals, and Ime Adoka now is going to the Eastern Conference Finals. So as they Oof. wrestle with Brent Brown and, and Doc Rivers, they had three guys who – at least two of the three guys, because you could throw out the Mike D'Antoni because I think he was there just for like almost a sabbatical year. The other two guys are, are, are better coaches than they've had uh, in their – former coach in their current coach. But Ime is also the only African-American True. head coach of the Celtics to ever advance to a conference finals. <laughs> Big day for Jay Williams. Huge day. Huge yeah. day. Yeah. Huge for Jay Williams. Uh, did you see that stat, by the way, Hank, that the Celtics have now been to the, uh, half of half. the com- Eastern Conference Finals? That's crazy. That's disgusting. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Do you ever, Hank, do you yeah, ever they're just better wake than up? the Patriots. Do you ever just wake up in the morning and, and thank God that you're a Boston sports fan? Yeah, I mean, being home is like the greatest thing in the world. I love being in Boston. It's a beautiful day. The city is alive, and it's just like I wish. I, I just love it here. It's Team the greatest Hank. city in the world. You must have been yeah. like Mother Teresa in a former life to get born Team Hank. This. Yeah. And then it, could you imagine that guy who has all that getting that triggered over a double fist pump? I'm not I triggered. Know. I think <laughs> well, it was that's, good. that's the worst part, Big Cat, is like people say act like you've been there before. Remember when I sprayed champagne yeah, during the yeah. Capitalist Stanley Cup run after they won one game in the finals, and they're like, act like you've been there? I'd literally never been there before. Yeah, ever. right. Hank, you just said out loud, you've been to half the Eastern Conference Finals. You, <laughs> above all anyone else, should know to act like you've been there before. Yeah, I think that was that's that's what someone that's been there before does. It's a perfectly normal reaction. <laughs> and now you get your double kryptonite because the Heat, I think, are two and zero against the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Final, and you have Jake Marsh, who's like a billion and zero against Henry Lockwood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited. I'm ready. I think it's. I think they said if they steal one in Miami, then they'll win the series. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, the road trip that Jake and I went on yes. down to DC, but um, this is directly relevant to you here, Hank. Jake at one point looked at me and he was like you know like now that you're in sports does it like the the wins mean like a little bit less to you when your team does well as he's beating me <laughs> in the hockey game so like he knows he knows that i i, I think that I Jake is, saying that. you, you said it. something along those lines where you were like it's it's not as meaningful mm. now that you're in sports in the sports media world oh about myself yes oh yes i thought you said i was Saying that about you? No, not no, no, not oh, about yeah. Yeah, so you're doing it again right now. Yeah, you see. No, I was just confused. <laughs> I was confused. No, no, I said like on what I want to do in my long term career. Mm-hmm. Like you have to become more neutral. Like obviously, I'm always going to rep my teams, but mm-hmm. living and dying and yeah, you could care less yeah. that you just destroyed that's PFT's will to live. Exactly. Mm-hmm. No. no, that's that's the message loud and clear. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Biggest alpha in the office. Yep. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um. Okay. Anything else? I mean, the Suns. The Suns game is officially – I mean, it's been over. But it's as, as it's as dead as a team – I we'd have to look back in history like what team has laid this type of egg in game seven. I, at home, it's, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. Chris Paul, still three points. The biggest egg possible. It's, it's crazy. Yes, yeah, CP3. Do you think he's hurt? <laughs> Should we say he's hurt? I think Chris Paul's too healthy. Okay. I think that's probably the issue. He's just right confused. Now. His body doesn't know how to react right now because it's like, wait, my, my left wrist should be hurting right now. Yeah, this might be I might have to watch this press conference afterwards. It hasn't I don't I'm not a big press conference watcher unless it's like LeBron losing in an epic fashion. Still hasn't done his QA. Yeah, he still hasn't done his QA. Uh also just spent all Friday the thirteenth watching scary movies. And uh, there, there's our LeBron bingo board for everyone keeping score at home. Uh, let's do who's back, though, and then we'll get to busting with the boys. And then we will talk about hockey and recap everything uh, that happened with PFT and Jake going down to D.C. Who's back of the week is brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Do you ever feel like you're always on work, friends, family, and expectation to be on 24-7? Sometimes you need just a moment to turn off and hit reset. That's when you reach for Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. The mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. We love Coors Light so much. Billy was trying to sneak a sip of one on Thursday night. Thought he was, uh, you know, being really sneaky. Very funny clip. Et think he's slicking a wig. Yeah, he was. He was. That was that was a nice move, Billy. But um, Coors Light is the best. The mountains are always blue when you're drinking Coors Light. When you need that second to yourself, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door or Drizzly or Instacart by with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coors Light is the best beer out there. 
Who's back of the week? Henry. Team Hank is back. Go ahead, Team Hank. Uh, yeah, Team Hank is back. He might have not got a who's back. Game seven hockey overtimes. Yeah. Pittsburgh, mm. congratulations. Congratulations. I'm I'm calling it right now for the for the for the Penguins. Wow, how dare you? That's that's your who's back? Well, it's not an overtime yet. Game's no, still going. Not. This is this is some good news podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> Lacrosse is back. Oh, yeah, there Lacrosse it is. Lacrosse is back. Sport okay. of the future. Lacrosse is back. Can uh, the sport of the future be back? Yeah, I mean it's that time of year. It's like whenever the season's starting, the PLL starting soon, the uh, college teams in the championship. Didn't we pick up some guy in the draft? Yeah, the Water Dogs actually had a really good draft. What's your, what's our grade? Uh, I give us an A plus. Okay, nice, cool. Nice. What about the Whip Snakes? Oh. Whip Snakes, I mean, as one of the reigning champions in the first inaugural years of the league, they didn't have that good of picks. But I think the Red Wolves are still the, th- the Redwoods are still the team to beat. Just give me a grade, Billy. I just need a draft grade. Uh, give them a B minus for the Whip Snakes. Okay. okay. Anyone get an F? Um, Atlas. Chrome. 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 Yeah. Chrome Grand I knew you were going to say Chrome. Can we put out a? You know, can we you put know out a list of our <laughs> of our draft grades memes? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, thank you. Just give right. everybody else a C. Yeah. Good job, Hank, with your who's back. Lacrosse is back. Uh, <laughs> PFT, your who's back? Uh, my who's back of the week is Danny Woodhead. Yes. My guy, Danny Woodhead. Our guy, Danny Woodhead. One of the OG part of my take recurring guests. Uh, maybe the best athlete that we've ever had on this show. He is very close to qualifying for the U.S. Open in golf. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very close. He, yes. He came in, I think, second or third place in the second final qualifying tournament uh, last weekend. So if he finishes, I think it's like top five at the next tournament that he's in. He's in the U.S. Open. Danny Woodhead's going to be playing the U.S. Open. It's crazy. I have full confidence in Danny. And, like, I, I sent him a, a congratulatory note afterwards. I was like, hey, man, this is super impressive. And he, he told me, like, this is honestly the best athletic thing that I've ever done in my life. It's like, he's better than Tony Romo at golf, right? And it's it is kind of crazy to think about how many people play golf. I mean, obviously making the NFL is is insane, but he's an exceptional athlete. And then to to transition and be this good at golf, it's fucking nuts, man. Yeah, you see the I think it was a birdie putt on seventeen that he had had an all time walk off celebration on it. Walked it in like Tiger Woods. Yeah, did a little ass slap. Yeah, thing. Danny is Danny is a legit golfer, and I. I I sometimes do this, but I tweeted without thinking. I said that if he makes the cut at the U.S. Open, I will cut every hair off my body. Because the original bet was I, oh, I was no. going to wait. Yes. I was going to wait yes. to cut my hair, my long hair, until Danny Wood had won a Super Bowl. Your Patriots couldn't get done for him, Hank. Uh, so unfortunately, that never happened. But if he makes a cut, every hair except for my eyebrows is coming off. The eyebrows, wow. eyebrows stay on. Soft. Why is that soft, Billy? Real men take their eyebrows off. My I mean, eyebrows are facts. That's, that's I true. I think you actually, if if that's, you are going to do every hair, you got to do every hair. That's the best that's part a great of my point body. By Billy. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. You got. No, I love do my every eyebrows. Hair. I everyone knows I've got great eyebrows. Just, no, do just every draw hair. them on. Draw yeah. them on for a little. No, eyebrows stay. <laughs> eyelashes come off. I'll take the eyel. I'll, I'll cut the eyelashes, but not the eyebrows. That would be freaky. Do those soft. grow back? Um, sons are down forty-two going into the. It's 40s. major week, by the way, for golf. PGA oh championship yeah! Yes, in Tulsa. yes. Yeah. In PGA Championship. Yeah. I saw some of the beer prices that they have. Oh yeah, people were freaking out about it's, it. It's it's going to be tough. It's there are going to be a lot of angry Oklahomans out there. Yeah, it's like eighteen dollars for a beer. Coors Light would never do that Just to you. Bring in a bring in a fucking flask. Sneak a flask. Yeah, man. it's not that hard. Um, okay, my who's back of the week is the Cincinnati Reds. For the sixth time in MLB history, they had a no hitter and they lost. Um. Not to be the fact check. Oh, guy. I know that they didn't technically pitch the ninth. Yeah, so but it's, still, they allowed, it's crazy. It's funny watching all the all the big J's out there carefully phrasing it. They allowed no hits, right? And they lost because they didn't pitch the bottom of the ninth because they lost. But all time, like the red is if the red season couldn't get worse, you have this happen where in the eighth inning they had three consecutive walks and then a fielder's choice uh, double play that they weren't able to to if they had gotten the double play it would have stayed scoreless uh but they weren't able to complete the double play so uh they lost one to nothing and gave up no hits it's so perfect that it happened to the pirates too. i know like I the know. unstoppable force meets the immovable object yes that's the only team that this could possibly happen yes to. and my other who's back is my voice i got my voice back i slept and i got my voice back so thanks to everyone who's like i want to kill myself i want my voice to be i want my voice to be back so bad that I actually made a doctor's appointment. How do you like that? I hope I fucking have cancer so everyone who who says shit to me that I can just shove it back in their face. What? Yeah. 
No, but it would. I would dunk on all. Knock on some wood. I'd pull up all the fucking tweets of people being like, "I can't stand your voice," and I'd be like, "Fuck you, dude." Knock on that wood. I got a real problem. No, but I'm back. Billy's doing. Billy's doing a great job pretending that he hopes that you don't have cancer. Yes, thank you, Billy. Billy's like, "All right, so is that seat? I'll probably lower it a little because he sits too high. It's right next to the beer (laughs) fridge, which is sick. Like low key, that's the seat that I. But I'm gonna see a doctor and see what I can do to not lose my voice all the time. So, but I am back right now. Felt good. Slept. Felt good. Felt feels good to, to have my voice back. Thank you for everyone who's actually concerned, not people who are just bitching. I was never concerned. All right. I appreciate that. But yeah, no, there were some people that got me triggered because it's like, you don't think I care? You think I'm just... It, it would be one thing if I was like partying and like yeah. smoking cigs and partying all the time and had no cooler. voice. That would be a lot cooler, a lot cooler. Reason. I just lost my voice because I don't sleep and we work a million hours. Oh, these Suns fans are so sad. Get ready to get tagged, PFT. As oh, cool yeah. as they were <laughs> when we yeah. watched them in the finals... They are very sad. The, now. the funniest guy in that in that uh, building right now is the dude that's dressed in the neon orange suit that also put bronzer all over his body. He's just he went to the game as a son. Yeah, like dressed up. And as he a looks son. bad. He looks bad right now. I, I this is one of those moments we're we're watching live as they go through sad Suns fans. <laughs> that lady's asleep. I would absolutely leave. I don't <laughs> think there's any shame in leaving because guess what? If you the team on the court quits, you can quit mm-hmm. too. At least you still have Kyler Murray. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you have September and October. Yeah. At least, hey, at least you have uh, DeAndre Hopkins is coming back for you guys this year. There we go. That'll be nice. Week that will seven. be really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Big free agent pickup. Billy. My who's back is Trash Pandas at the Arkansas versus Vanderbilt College baseball game. Oh, I saw There this. was a raccoon running through the stands, and one brave gentleman by the name of Grant Harmon just grabbed the raccoon and uh, just held it up for the whole crowd to see. It was a pretty awesome moment. Grant is such an obvious name for somebody that would be the person to handle the raccoon. Yeah. It's like it's going to be a Grant or it's going to be a Zach. Mm-hmm. It was reported he had no prior experience grabbing raccoons, and he was bitten several times by the raccoon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> And immediately after the game, had to go to the ER to get his first round of rabies shots, which I bring to the question, why do dogs and other animals have vaccines that are one shot for rabies, Mm -hmm. but when humans might get in contact with rabies, they have to take like six rounds of shots. You got to get a boost, and then you got to get another booster, and then another booster after that, because it's it's probably all Pfizer. Hmm. But dogs get get rabies vaccines, like they get them over and over. They get them every year. So why don't we do that? I think we have one that's just... I don't know. Billy, if, Dude, if rabies is But like, if a dog got bit by a raccoon, it also would have to go to the hospital. Hmm. But Billy, if you if, just, if you told everybody <laughs> in America they had to get a yearly rabies shot, yeah. how many people do you think would follow through with that? A lot. You think so? <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure pest yeah. control guys have to get rabies shots. Stephen Colbert, Dude, we, we all have a big do. commercial. We all have rabies it. vaccine. You no, and you're no, a kid. I, not me, bro. No, bro. I don't let him, him put the jab in Is that in not me. it? No, That's MMR not... is measles, mumps, rubella. I thought there was something. Oh, no, no is it tough. tetanus? Yeah, tet- Dude, tetanus. Tetanus so, is what I'm thinking remember, about. Remember that one time I woke up with a bat in my barn? Yeah. I was like, no, I, I don't. played, I, I played, yeah, I, do. I played roulette. It was like, I'm either going to die of rabies in six months or I have to go to the hospital to get these shots every three months. Yeah. But dogs get rabies vaccines every year. You do get yeah. your dog. I think it's every year. You, yeah. you do do that. Yeah, right? but why can't they do that okay. for humans? I think it's every other year. You get the new tag for your dog. Yeah. We oh. should actually, Billy, you should, if anybody on earth should get like a prophylactic rabies shot, a preventative one just in case, it should be you. Yes. Do you think anyone's selling fake dog vaccines for rabies? That'd be pretty fucked yeah. up. Yeah, probably. It, for yeah, sure. someone's like, I don't, I don't believe in vaccinations for my dog, so I'm gonna like. There's a black market of you can get a <laughs> dog fake tag. Dog. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, also, what what's the opposite of like a, a bad beat? It's uh, a backdoor cover or a lucky win. Yeah. Well, that's what's back. If you guys watched UFC on Saturday, Black Blackovic uh, had an absolute backdoor cover when he was uh, like the money dog by a long shot. And his opponent, Raykic, like he was, I bet on him. I was like, this dude, Jan, is going to win. First round, he got his ass beat, was bleeding everywhere. Second round, Raykic just like blew out his knee, and it was like oh, the craziest crazy. comeback win. That it was actually, awesome. the, 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 like, who, there was some famous guy, maybe it was Jose Aldo, who broke his leg. Yeah. Goal Rangers. Goal Rangers. Rangers. In your face. No, that's a replay. That's a replay. No, that's a replay. That's a replay. That's a replay. Oh, my God. You're thinking it's a replay. Not in your face, That's a replay. you think about Anderson Silva? On your back. Maybe, yes. Who yeah. who broke his leg, and it was just, well, that fucking yeah. sucks if you bet on him. Also, did, did you realize that every bad beat, the other side is a lucky win? 
Yes. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yes. is true. But I was yeah. on the so good it's side of the bad, bad beat. Yeah. Yeah. It was a bad it feels beat good, right? for the other yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Very so, bad beat. I don't feel that bad because it was MCL, LCL. Those are like a couple weeks. <laughs> what would those you have felt bad. bad? ACL. I, it feels like a bad you ACL. You would have donated I, your money? No, no. I wouldn't have even mentioned it, but like... <laughs> You can deal MCL, MCL LCL, LCL, LCL just he'll it's not that just walk it off. I like the idea yeah. of Billy winning money because the guy like blew out his knee and he's like, I can't take this money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is blood money. I can't have this. Also, my last use back is Ben Mintz. Ben Mintz is back. Literally in in the city he's, of New York. Yeah, he's back. I can't wait to go. For home. How long? I don't know, but the tour I is can't over. Wait to go home. Three days. <laughs> I can't wait to go back. I think I'm gonna give him a tapeworm. I think that's how we're gonna get them. Really yeah, we have the, the dozen experiment. Everyone tune into the dozen trivia. Uh, I think it starts next week. Yeah, but we're, we're taping the episodes this week. Yeah, throughout the office. But but Jeff D. Lowe, who uh, most of you probably know, sent an email to everyone telling them what their schedule was, which he had already done. And when I came in the office tonight, he's like, "Yeah, that was just an email for Ben Mintz because he texted me saying what time's my game on Monday night, and he's like, your game is literally the first game at 10 a.m. So. Who's back of the week, Ben Mintz? Me and Hank playing each other round one. There we go. Yeah, it's going to be yeah, fun. Let's talk about rattled. BFD is rattled. I'm not, how am I rattled? You're trying to figure Wait. out who my third third teammate is. Oh, I know who your third teammate is. On a scale of one no, fist pump to though. two, how rattled? Uh, well, that's normal. That would be perfectly normal scale, but he's very rattled. Two fist pumps. Two fist pumps. Not rattled. rattled. Got it. Um, no, two fist and pumps. You don't, rattled. And, very you, rattled. And, and you don't know who it is. Um, okay, Jake, your who's back of the week. My who's back is a potential who's back, and it's Drew Brees. He yeah. hinted that he could be returning to football. He could go back to NBC. He could be focusing on business and philanthropy. This, this, is, training great, for, this is classic Jake. <laughs> training for pickleball. You're just burying, golf, the, you're burying the story. Coaching his kids. What, that he's out on NBC? Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> he sucked at his job. No, but, but I don't think anyone expected him to hint at Usually when someone hints that they're coming back to play, they're probably going to come well, back Well, I think play. he's probably embarrassed, and he's yeah. like, shit, i got to figure out what to do here. He thought that he was going to be Chris Collinsworth next year. Yeah. And so they're like, well, we already have Chris Collinsworth. Right. So I don't know what you're going to be doing besides exactly what you did last year, which you weren't happy with. So now he's thinking that he might come back to the NFL. I actually – I hope that he comes back to the NFL and that he goes to the Dolphins. Oh. To make up for like the mm. Dolphins organization, be like, redemption. Sorry that we took Dante Culpepper instead of you. Let's it try would, to run it back. But I don't know. Like if you're a Dolphins receiver, to go from a rocket arm of Tua to Drew Brees would be a tough adjustment. Yeah, like Drew Brees, he gets down there, he might hypothetically underthrow you by 15 yards in <laughs> in mini camps and make like if you're Tyreek Hill. Make you wait around for seven seconds to catch a pass before you run with it. Dude, Tua got done so dirty with that clip. How I, do you do that with OTAs? And like, there's you get to decide the highlights. Somebody you decide it. Somebody in, in their media department does not like Tua very much. I'm convinced it could be one of those like, oh, let's like that quote about um, the Bengals receiver Jamar Chase. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, he's gonna stink. I'm convinced. Yeah, it was done on purpose. Two and on. Yep. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Also, I'm going to put a future if the if the Heat beat the Celtics, we as a podcast have to put a future when? on the Dolphins. Yeah, Jake. No, whoa, whoa, Hank. Hank is Hank very wasn't confident. Listening. Hank yeah. wasn't listening you there. You just you just oh, said no. Yeah, no, I said it and then I yeah. Oh no, <laughs> no. Uh -oh. cut I, that. We'll I cut said that. if it, the Heat beat the Celtics it. and you said when, but if the delete Heat it. beat the Celtics, delete I think it. we as a podcast need to put a future on the Dolphins to win the Super Bowl because Jake. Jake's destiny will to just beat everyone. But Jake I will just say, running through us all. Yeah, I am not excited to go against Hank right now. And <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah, let it out. Yeah, go ahead. no, he. Yeah, I'm scared of Hank right now. Right, I think we all should be. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he almost got me fired because I fucking tweeted that clip of him spazzing out on the wood. I, I was the next literally day, tweeted I that him. clip. Fifteen minutes later, Erica had an email in my inbox being like, "What's this clip? Uh, uh, you, like, you know that you can't bash." Our uh, C-suite employees, and I was like, "Fuck!" No, I'm just excited My for the bad. AWLs. This is this is what they want. <laughs> just for the podcast. <laughs> Hank, are you afraid it's of Jake? Starting. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, yes. You have to be. You but can't. like it's one of those things where, and and it again, like it'll sound worse if they lose. But I am riding high. I do have some momentum that I don't normally have. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna try and ride it. I have more momentum than usual, so. Hopefully that train just runs Jake over. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get to busting with the boys. Great interview. Uh, before we do that, PFT, you got a quick word from one of our sponsors. Before we get to the boys, here to talk to you about our good friends over at Cross Country Mortgage. If you've ever tried 
to purchase a home, you know that it can be a lot of red tape. It can be super frustrating. And if you're still throwing money away on rent every month, you're just sitting on the bench. Cross Country Mortgage puts you in the game, and you're going to be part of a championship team. The great thing about Cross Country Mortgage is that they make that experience as seamless as possible. They make it easy. They take all the worry out of your hands. They take care of you because they're a people-first group of people. Here's a stat. They have an average close time of 21 days which is ridiculously fast. They've got a wide variety of loan types. means that they've got everything to cover everyone. And we have some exciting news. They're giving away free Barstool and Cross Country Mortgage sweatshirts when you sign up to refi or get pre-approval while supplies last. So what are you waiting for? Get off the bench. Start warming up. Cross Country Mortgage is the team dedicated to getting you and your dream home. Start winning today. Go to ccm.com slash barstool so Cross Country Mortgage can take care of you throughout the buying process. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS, 3029, all loans subject to underwriting approval, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. And now here are the Bustin' with the Boys Boys. Okay, we now welcome on very special guests, our good, good friends. It is Will Compton, it is Taylor Luan, the boys, coming all the way to New York. Look, they're doing a little handshake right now. That's very nice. So they came all the way to New York from Nashville. Uh, we were trying to plan this for a very long time. It was, you know, a big deal because Will – well, I'll let you take the floor. Will, Will is going to retire from the NFL, and we wanted him to announce it on our show. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, a, go ahead, well, Will. Hey, that's this fake news. This has all been planned. That's fake news, dude. What are you – Oh, you're Play playing – Will, oh, okay. alive and well. So, are you – Matter of fact uh, – Wait, you're not – dude, you said – you're like, I want to come to New York and do a big so, deal, and we'll do Times no, Square. No, that's not what I said. So, that's you're staying in the said. NFL? Was, oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Thank you about some advice, Will. Uh, if, if you say that you're retiring, though, it's like you know, a boxer when they say they're going to retire and stop fighting. It just makes people want them more. Yeah, For well, sure, but we have a platform that if that did happen... Wait, but so, all right, it's, well, we need well, someone's retirement. So, Taylor, are you going to do it? No, God. <laughs> Come on. No. Um, I'm going to retire from the NFL. Yeah. I'm, I'm out. Not, I'm, I'm out. taking my name out. I'll do it. I'll retire right now. EFT. You retire right now. Yeah, okay. I'm retiring from the NFL. Okay. Oh, shit. Wow. I'm done. All right. I That's am it. too. Big cat. All right. Yeah. Hey, John. Will? 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 Ah, oh, year 10, baby. We're thinking. <laughs> <Will. laughs> oh, you yeah. selfish yeah. fuck. <laughs> we had a pact, Will. We were all going to retire oh. at the same time. Oh, man. And right. the well, sunset. It's great to see you guys. Great to have you in the studio. What do you think? I mean, what? Taylor already like made fun of us. He's like, I thought this studio would be bigger. Yeah, I didn't want to do this. I want to start like this. <laughs> yeah, and like I literally said in my head, when you walk in, because we've had some issues recently, and we've kind of come back no, from a rocky, yeah, from a rocky deal. Yeah, and I yeah, I told myself true. when I walked in, hey, be nice and play nice and have fun. And here I am, right before we start, I go, oh, I thought it'd be bigger. I gave myself a pep talk this morning. I just looked in the mirror and I was like, you're for the boys. You're for the boys. Just remember, you're yeah. for the boys. And once even you, though they ripped off literally everything you've ever done with your podcast, I hate that. you're for the boys. Yeah, I, hate I gave that. that. No, I said that to myself. And now I'm for I the boys. I understand that you said that to yourself, but I, I don't understand why you got to lie to yourself in the mirror. That's true. What? Oh, I'm not for the boys? What? No, not oh. that boy. <laughs> why, why don't you clear that up? Because I feel like a lot of people out there, they, they see the slogan, for the boys, and they're like, wait, what does that mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. That's super innovative. That is crazy. I've never... Like that what is, if for right. the boys? What a unique. Saying. I don't think those three words ever been put together. Wait, no. so, all right. Let me give a hypothetical. Hypothetical, hypothetical, hypothetical. Hypothetical. Let's say two days from now, it's Saturday morning. Is it for the boys? Saturdays are always for the boys. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. That's a barstool thing. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys also for the girls, or can well, we're for boys girl. be girls wow. too? Girl boys dad. can be girls. Boys can be girls. Yeah, girls, girls can be boys. Can be boys. It's, it's 2022. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. We're Good all point. girl dads, right? Come on now. So what the fuck? We got to be for the girls. Yeah, yeah. I See, love you a girl women. Dad? I don't yeah, like this. Girl. I don't like how this is starting. Will, dude, this I, is like trust this, me, is, this, is, this is exactly what Adolf Hitler did. But this he is just <laughs> came in. He just tried to come in. Yeah, and that's what you guys are doing. We guys, we don't have a sentence. Were you a history major? We can't get a sentence in. I was that's, a general studies major. Yeah, I remar- know a little bit about everything. Remarkably, yeah. I got accurate. a little bit of everything. Hitler but I really came feel in like a, wait, you guys are coming in pretty strong. And if I don't, if I stop talking for a minute, all of a sudden you're gonna start talking, and I can no longer gather my thoughts. Hey, we talked about filibuster. Hey, we talked about filibuster. There's no way Brady Hoke made you go to class. Brady Hoke absolutely did, and if no. I didn't have six a.m.s, I would. Can I ask a real question about Brady yeah, Hoke? Yeah, okay. I, mean, I think let's start the this show. Real question. And real question. Start, start the right. show. When things were going bad, yeah. Did anyone in the locker room like Brady? Maybe throw on a headset. That's a great point. That is <laughs> a great point because it's one of those. It's it's very similar to 
a fat reliever. Mm-hmm. A fat reliever comes in, and if he shoves, everyone's like, love this guy. The minute he sucks, like Joe Blanton, when he would pitch and he'd give up runs, everyone would be like, you fat fuck. Right. Brady Hoke, when he doesn't have the headset on, he's like, leader of men, everything's going well. When he doesn't, it's like, dude, do you even know there's a game going on? Yeah, I think you answered the question yourself. But I will say, like, when we when he first came in, it was right after Rich Rod got fired, and we went to the Sugar Bowl. Won the Sugar Bowl. Kicked it. Boom. It was amazing. And then the next year, when things were kind of going downhill a little bit, it was, like you said, at first it was, like, cute and fun, and I think that everyone's kind of looking around going, it seems a little fucked up now. Yeah, seems like he should be... Probably, should, should probably listen, telling us what to do. You should listen I will to say one he was plays. a good coach. Yeah. I, I mean, he was a good guy. I think he was. It was great to be oh, around. Back, well, he backtracked. Yeah. He backtracked. Even no, better no, person. Backtracked. I do want to say he's a good coach. I mean, he's you a good guy. You never want to say that about a coach, by the way. You never want to be like, you know what? He was a great coach, but an even better person. That always means that's code for he sucked as a coach. Oh, I didn't say that. That wasn't what I said, right? You retracted actually, the good coach I'm, part. I'm you said he's a good guy. He's actually a good guy and a good coach. Yeah, he's doing great at San Diego State. Is he back at San Diego State now? Yeah, he's the head coach of San Diego State. They've had some pretty good years. Boom. So he's a good like coach, that. and he was interim coach at Tennessee. Go Vols! I got so good for him. Go and he Vols. was at, he was at Oregon for a little bit. I think he did well. He's doing a lot better than Rich Rodriguez is doing now. And those are my two college coaches. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's true. You got to pick the lesser. So what'd you how, think of Rich? How are you? I guys? thought Rich was solid. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Rich was decent. Thanks, Will. I'll be honest, with you, I wasn't a huge fan of Rich. Yeah, I, wasn't I don't one, think a lot of people but, uh, are. <laughs> there we now we're getting somewhere. Listen, it was it was one of those things. Like I came in, he was a little rough on me my first year and my second like. I redshirted, and then the next year. What does that mean? It wasn't. What is, what is like a little rough? Because that is a serious question. Well, like, I think when you're when you're a freshman in college, and especially if you redshirt, like you're really you have zero value to the team at that right. point. You're like you're redshirting. I was 254 pounds coming in, picking up a scholarship. Right. So there, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a scholarship away. So it was kind of like we had a weed out the week type of mentality. Aaron, um, Mike Barros was there, who was the strength coach. He had his own TV show for a little bit. I think it was on Discovery. And uh, they, it was definitely like a let's see who's going to quit first vibe. So right. they were pretty hard on us our first year. The next year, things just weren't going well. So I didn't get to see like a good, like, I didn't think I ever saw Rich Rodriguez smile when right. he was at Michigan. He had a great, great job at West Virginia, was doing well at U of A until, you know, things until deals happened. Yeah. But uh, I just don't think he got a fair shake at Michigan. Because, so, you know, Michigan, the Big Ten is so caught up in their downhill power offense yeah. type deal. Wisconsin knows all about it. Yeah. And then we bring Rich Rodriguez in after Lloyd Carr. And Rich Rodriguez is spreading. He's got five guys, you know, out wide. And we're running, like, no tight end sets. We're running, like, 10 personnel and running, like, no huddle. Yeah. So everyone in Michigan is like, what the fuck are we doing? Right. You better ridiculous. win fast if right. you're going to do that. Yeah, you got to win fast. If you don't win fast. fast, then it's like, this and we is just not didn't, We just football. didn't have the, the chance to do that. Like, Denard Robinson was a huge get, but he was young. And, and um, Rich was fired before, like, Denard really came into his own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know? Were you on the team against uh, Appalachian State? Or was no, that, that was 2008 or 2007. Was that still talked about? It is with any Appalachian State guy that's on our team, like on the Titans. There was a kid. What was this kid's name? Isn't that crazy? I would never, like, that's like their. That's like their like the greatest thing that's ever I happened. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. It's that it always gets brought, brought up. Yeah. It's wild, and it is one of those things. Like you don't want to. Like we were playing Toledo my senior year, and we almost lost to Toledo, and it was one of those things. Like fuck, we almost had an App State deal happen. Yeah. Right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You, you guys are like the example. Like for yeah. every team. Yeah. Every, don't like, be a Michigan right, in right, that right, situation. Right. I know, but hey, how about Michigan right now though? Only hope for the Big Ten. I mean, what have you done for us lately? <laughs> exactly. Do you guys even have we like won a the Big, Big Ten, Ten rivalry? Like, like, we won Nebraska the Big Ten. Yeah, we got that? donkeyed against Georgia, but that doesn't mean nothing. It, Nebraska, dude, come on now. It means, it means Nebraska would have lost uh, by six. I'm not. Yeah, that's true. They would have been that's, way closer. But that's I'm facts. saying, like, guys like Big Cat and I, we needed. Don't, don't, don't do this. I'm saying, okay, I got schools like Wisconsin and Nebraska needed Michigan to put on a better show in the playoffs. I yeah, so no, I, 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 I agree. agree you guys were a great representation of the right. Big Ten. I was fired up. I was like, okay, Michigan, these boys got a shot. If they come out, not flat, they got a shot, dude. But and what happened? It just I think no, it like listen, I think it like embarrassed well, how do you me. Ride I or went die. there. Listen, I, I'm ride or die Big Ten. We need to get another title soon. And it might be yeah. it probably is gonna have to be Ohio State because Don't do at, that. I'm just being honest. I I'm think a very out. I'm a very honest Big Ten fan, when people are like, oh, remember last year when they did the whole COVID thing and they they won the tiebreaker with Indiana and Indiana fans were going crazy? It's like, dude, we got to be in the playoff every year to gotcha. stay relevant. The Pac-12 is no longer relevant. Zero percent correct. Relevant. Ohio State, as much as I hate them, they are the best chance every year. They are. They, yeah, they, they are. Really are. They They're are. consistently the best chance. I think right. I think this year will be a huge determining factor for Michigan. I agree. As far as like being momentum back to forward, like you yes. did it once. Yep. It, and then that yep. might have been a fluke. People are saying, not me. People yeah. are saying, if you do it again, would you agree with those I'll, people? I, when I'm finished, I'll exhale. 
when I, if you can do it again, if you can fucking do it one more time, then it's like, okay, now we got something. Yeah. Now we're ripping it up, and we have two teams that are relevant, Ohio State and Michigan. Then we need to, like, I think the next in line would be a Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. I think I think Wisconsin would probably be the next in line of those They've won the most teams. Big Ten games besides Ohio State in the last decade. Yeah, but there's... That's one of those stats that Big Ten like 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 just carries like, around with them. I mean, Ohio just, just is, waiting to bust out at the guy. first Ohio side Ohio State is a white guy in the NFL. Like <laughs> hard working but low ceiling. Yeah, uh, not Ohio State, Wisconsin. I feel yeah. like, I feel that way. I was gonna say what? No, no, Ohio, Ohio State's not like that. My bad. Yeah. Are you a little bit embarrassed about the uh, run the damn ball T-shirts that got worn last year and then they just got their dicks put in the dirt? Mm. Who's did? Uh, the offensive line of Michigan. Right before that game yeah, against that Georgia, was right? Tough, and then we didn't run it very well at all. Huh? Not like yeah. Kind of live and die by that sword. Yeah, I mean, I I like. I like the way that Michigan was built last year. Mm-hmm. I like the physicality of the offensive line. I feel like that's what you have to do if you're Michigan. You can't you can't be Ohio State, right? You have to be Michigan and play the type of football yeah. that like has gotten your program to the way it is. I do think that there is something that has to do with culture that gets like passed down. I don't think that a team can immediately change even if you have a great coach like they tried with Rich Rod, a guy that'll come in and change entirely what you guys have always been about. Um so I like what you did last year. I don't know uh, if that's like if that's going to be a type of football that's sustainable moving forward, though, as all the rules continue to get changed to favor, you know, the passing game. Yeah, I think you you need to keep that same mentality on the offensive line. They won the Joe Moore Award last year, which the best offensive line in the NCA that that did not show when they were playing against Georgia. Georgia had what fifteen guys go and in drafted. It's crazy. It was, it was unbelievable. Their defense was an anomaly, right? It was like Alabama every other year. So I guess not an anomaly except for Alabama. But I think. The only way for that to be sustainable is you just have to get some more speed on the outside. Still be who you are in the run game, but if you have more speed on the outside to run a couple thinking like you can a quick little throw to the yeah, small yeah. fast guy, yeah. let him get going, those types of things, you're playing a whole different You're game. Darren Sproles place. Um, yeah. All right, so moving off football for a second, how are we feeling overall with, with the podcast? You guys have been it feels like you guys are crushing it right now. It does feel that way, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it does feels feel good. that way. It does. It does. I feel like we've kind of made it. Your YouTube yeah. numbers are pretty crazy, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, it yeah, depends I mean, on what crazy is. You know what I mean? I mean, if we're compared to Joe Rogan, we're definitely not doing anything. Well, if everyone's yeah. compared to Joe Rogan, yeah, well, we're not doing shit. Sh- I think you guys. No. No. Or, I mean, Joe Rogan's in a different Billy's stratosphere. Billy's using us as a stepping stone yeah. to eventually get hired by Joe Rogan. That dude's in a different That'd fucking be cool. stratosphere. Do you think that's possible? Long you game, Billy. Billy? Absolutely Long not. game, son. What would you guys say, though, is like the big thing that it has felt like. I, I mean, maybe I'm way off, but it does feel like maybe the last, I don't know, six months or so, it feels like it's hit a spot where it's, it, it's very consistent good every time and you guys have felt a groove it, again you can tell me that's way wrong but I it does feel that way is there re- anything that you can point to man i don't know that's a good question i do feel like we've been hitting a good stride yeah like sometimes like guests move the needle for you for sure and then when those audiences of other guests watch us you retain a little bit of them right and then they kind of ride with you the rest of the time um but i do feel like we've been hitting like a good stride like I, it's tough. I feel like we got a great like lineup of guests. PFT, you got to come on. Big K, you actually got to come to. You, I mean, you you tried to kill me in that fucking bus. When I we went did. on that bus, Taylor, it was no joke. It was the most perfect day in Knoxville, Tennessee. Like the most perfect fall Nashville. day. It was probably fifty nine degrees, not a cloud in the sky. That crisp, beautiful air. You know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds. I beautiful. went in the bus. Bus was like 140 degrees. <laughs> yeah, and so I was just sweat I was there, sweating dude. so Try much. Trying them heat proteins, dude. I like I have never had a podcast where I, I was like I'm actually having a great time, but if I don't drink something right now, I will pass out. Brandon <laughs> almost did. Yeah, he did. You he should, was complaining the whole yeah. time. Can you imagine the numbers that episode would do if you killed Big Cat on yeah. the bus? <laughs> oh like on the bus, watching him die we during a, a podcast. Still, yeah, still release. Like that's how you guys got. Yeah. Think oh, you guys, Big Cat it. would want us to release his episode. If I, yeah. if oh, I died dude, right here. Yeah, if I died right here right now. I'd hope you guys would release. Yeah, it so you guys are trapped in like the old school thinking mentalities. You got, you got to get like a little bit more cutthroat and understand that like actually hurting your guests sometimes is good for numbers in the yeah. outcome. Like we. We hurting almost, our guests physically, yeah, oh, and mentally, mentally too. Mentally, Got more, you. more like so what we're mentally. doing to you right now because you're yeah. thinking in your head, "Did I tell him I was going to retire?" Yeah. You haven't really like perked back up since the beginning. That is what true. are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we all retired. Yeah, if you Everybody guys want to born retire, for the boys. Yeah, everyone's everyone's we literally retired for Dude, the boys. If you guys need me to retire, like I'll fucking. Nah, retire. we don't want it. It's too late now. All right, yeah. good. It'd be like trying to play. Go ahead, retire. I also think what you guys have discovered. Football, man! I'll retire right now. 
<laughs> I, I, fuck this I'm shit, fucking dude. done with this game, dude. I ran All right, I'm the, back. I ran into these guys at, at the coffee shop next door before we came into work, and I was telling them that they found, they actually found their way into like oh, God, a hack this. of a, uh, like a, a secret way to just get engagement and numbers no matter what in the podcast and content game, and that is to have a strong opinion about a fast food burger location. Yes, yes, yeah. And absolutely. so, so Playoff Willie over here hates In-N-Out. I actually think that Hank is skipping this interview because he's so triggered by your opinion on In-N-Out. Mm -hmm. He will make us, I think he's made us drive an hour out of our way to get In-N-Out. We usually have to get it right after we get off the airplane in Los Angeles, right before we get to the airport when we're leaving Los Angeles. He is obsessed with In-N-Out. You hate In-N-Out. And now everyone's either mad at you or loves you. Yeah, I mean, I think, like when you had to travel an hour to go get In-N-Out, Billy, were you part of this? Big Cat, were you part of it? Probably, yeah. I mean, was In and Out everything that he sits there and talks about? No, In and Out to me is um, the burgers very, very good. The fries are lacking, and I think it's one of those things that if done. we if we lived out on the West Coast, I'd I'd do it every now and then, but I wouldn't be like this is incredible. It's the novelty of it, right? Of us I, going I out there and being like In and Out, we don't get it often. I agree. It's the experience right. factor. There's right. a not there. You said a great word, yeah. novelty. There's like this novelty factor of going out, seeing the long lines of In and Out, the experience. People were taking shots at me because I compared it to Chick Fil A. I'm not saying Chick Fil A is an overrated chicken sandwich. I'll I'm say, saying I'll say that. Yeah, I know. You I will. mean, Popeyes just showed up with a chicken sandwich and dominated Chick Fil A immediately. Because people I still were dying love for chicken. Did, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Did, did they dominate them? Yes. They dominated them for a moment in time. No, so yeah. much better though. I think. No, I, think, I disagree. Oh. I think Chick Fil A is doing pretty well. There are two different types of chicken sandwiches. Right. One is is much bigger. It's got a lot of extra breading on it, and it's got a different type of bun. They're two. You can enjoy both. I think they're both great sandwiches. I agree. I don't with you. think that. So Popeyes came in. They did make. They dropped a fucking bomb on they the chicken the game. Fucking, they yeah. did a great they job. They put a oh. nuke. Their rollout on the chicken was really game. fucking good. It was like Glenn Taylor and then Popeyes, the two people responsible for killing the most chickens in America this mm -hmm. year, and they created a fucking work of art with their sandwich. Chick Fil A is still good. I'm still gonna go to Chick Fil A like once a week and get theirs. Yeah. I don't think I have to choose. And I think that when, when it comes to the burger debate, I, here's, here's a controversial opinion. I think all hamburgers are pretty good for the most part. I don't think that there's like a gourmet burger out there in the fast food game. There's not one that I hate, but I think with in and out it's like you pay $4.99 and you get a good cheeseburger. Correct. I think that's what people like to do. Yeah, I think people, yeah, and I'm one of those people as well. If I got five bucks and I see In-N-Out, I would love to go to In-N-Out. When we go to AZ or when we go to the West Coast, I'm excited to go to In-N-Out because of the right. novelty experience factor of going right. to In-N-Out with my West Coast boys. Right. But mm -hmm. you go in the conversation as best tasting burger. We're not talking about all the bells and whistles of everything else, and I think that's what In-N-Out does. Just like Chick-fil-A, incredible service. They got workers out there working all the way out into the highway, dude. And you're about you're getting your food. They're bam, bam, bam. It's great service, great experience. Uh, the ingredients, yes, very quality. But again, we're talking about a great taste. We're talking about the best tasting burger out there. And to me, In-N-Out is so overhyped. Overhyped. Uh oh, I, all right. So Taylor, why don't you? You're, you're sitting there. I just think it's a little bullshit. I, Will just here's what Will's become. He's become a guy that is obsessed with clicks, and so he'll say whatever yeah. he needs to do mm -hmm. uh -huh. to make sure that people, except retire. Yeah, except retire. Yeah, yes. right. Like what would get well, the no. most clicks? No, no, no. Retire. See, that's what only I'm, for that's a moment. What I'm only for a moment. About the click. But when December rolls around, and so and he starts talking about playoff Willie all over again, more mm. clicks. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think somebody's bummed. I passed him and followed. Here's the deal. Oh, oh big time. Actually, I think no. somebody's bummed. I passed him. I told you today. I was proud of you. I literally said to oh. you, I but was now proud you're going to call me a like, click boy. Yeah. Oh, you are a click boy. You're going to call me a you're click, click boy. boy. You're a click boy right now. Well, I'm, I'm, no I'm going to give boy, you a dog. compliment here. Um, oh, I guess I'll give my opinion later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm going to give a compliment. <laughs> I guess I was going to talk about In and Out Burger, but right, now I'm ahead, no talk longer going to talk about In and Out Burger. I feel nope. like you guys. Go ahead, dude. It's your show. Burger debate. You guys are doing a great fucking job here. It's a tale of doing your show. And I, I do think, like, when you say last six months, I think one thing that we've done better at is just, I guess, being more consistent on the internet, too. Yeah, like putting our right. face out there right, more, right. having more yeah. stronger opinions. We well, don't have to go stuff. to practice right. every day. Right, exactly. Right. Tell, you got a lot well, more time us, to post. Tell us your burger I would take. say that I'd agree with that as well. Tell us your burger I think take. That um, the last six months we've done a lot better at being more consistent, and I, I think I didn't just leave somewhere for four months. That's usually what I usually do in the off season. Yeah, yeah. To be around, and then Stick also around. doing the spring tour. Ooh, yeah, was that, was spring spring that was huge. Spring tour was huge. The spring tour was a big deal for us. So Taylor, give us your burger take. Uh, I just said the time's no, passed. No, no, go ahead. Right? Give it, no, 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 I want it. I want it. Hang on, hang on. Load of bullshit. Will's all about clicks. Yeah. Continue. Burgers. Okay. There's no denying. Oh, dude, I fucking knew it. I fucking took the trap. Damn it, dude. Oh, 
You know when someone does something and you <laughs> and you immediately hit like a sweat, like your body, yeah, like immediately yeah. that when you went like that, when you went, I fucking drenched, dude. I'm curious. When you no. did that, the fucking heat turned on immediately and went to 110 on me. I'm actually I'm soaking wet now. You're so close. I, to that, I actually want to know. PFT wants to know. I actually want to know. know. I'm like, hey, I want to know. Yeah. No, I'm, like I'm not laughing I think, because I okay. wanted to hear. Let me cool down, dude. Thank God I'm wearing this yeah. Duke Cannon, dude. It really cools my pits. Thank God. Uh, when you walk in in and out, I don't care. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. How did you not see that one coming? Because I thought I thought you were genuine. I thought you were genuine. I thought you were, listen, when we were down there, he said he loved it in out Burger. So when Will said he wanted to actually hear, I thought, oh, yeah, 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 I'm about no. to have a teammate no, this game. No, Billy, he goes, why well, haven't you said a fucking word yet, dude? Because in and out's pretty trash. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Billy! It, it underperforms, whereas like places like Carl Bro. Jr.'s, you're like, oh, is this place trash? Coming from a guy yeah, that set up a boxing yes. match, dude. I agree with that. <laughs> oh, oh, that whoa, set up whoa, a boxing match. Hey, Billy, I think you're telling me that was real. Don't you think if I set up a boxing match, you don't Yeah, all right, grazed his shoulder and he went down. Don't throw these mic memes. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you well, that was just gonna become yelling. Just gonna become yelling. <laughs> Taylor, do you think you could beat up Billy? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's important to have that conversation right now. It's very important. Billy, you can talk. What do you mean? It's, it's the most important should ask possible question. question to ask. I think you should ask Billy, Billy, you Billy answer that question. It's just a toxic conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Billy, <laughs> Billy <laughs> took three <laughs> boxing lessons, and Bro, he probably thinks he could beat me up right now. dude. don't. Billy. I, How many 225s no, can you I get though, Billy? Don't, bro. Oh, okay. no. That's it? That's cap. And, like, cap. Cap. You think you, cap. you really think it's hey, cap? Hey, Billy hasn't said nothing to you. Just don't don't let I know. I know. Hey, you you're know letting, what, Billy? Let me apologize to you. You're That's letting right. a lot of you that. You and I had a great rapport in the hallway. They <laughs> Honestly, did this. I'm still sweating. Yeah. Thank God I'm wearing no, a we'll have the We'll have your podcast broken up by the end of this. God. No, no, we're strong. We're good. We got to be bad. So what's your what's your handshake? And at what point do you guys stop being for the boys and start being for the men? Mm. Don't do that. That's mm. what we do on this. Hey, We're for the men. The show over. Mm. Part of my take <laughs> for mm. the men. For so the you want to know about our handshake? Yeah, boys. You guys have got to witness it. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure Billy recorded it. He could slow it down, yeah. see yeah. it a little bit clearer. It's special. Yeah. I've actually always wondered that. And, and Will, you might be a better person to ask than Taylor because you've played your career. You've been a titan, right? So yeah. Will, you've bounced around a little bit. How journeyman. long? How long? You're a journeyman, Grindr. a veteran. Mm. How long does it couch take uncomfortable. to learn are, the? the that's notes. part of the, That's part of what <laughs> we're taking do. notes. This couch yeah. is uncomfortable. How long does it take to learn the new handshakes in every locker room that you go into and create your own with your teammates? Dude, uh, what are we talking like? You got to be an athlete to know handshakes. Well, yeah, it's memory. like I know you. I know you got handshakes with some of the boys. Don't you? Gotta you? have a couple handshakes. Like how long does it take? It doesn't take that long. Well, you hiding under those glasses. I don't think I have any <laughs> specific handshakes with any. Of the really? Boys. I think we do fist pounds sometimes. We do hugs. We you know what's an underrated handshake? This one. Not don't do our handshake. I'm just gonna show you the no, no, the slap and the bump. Oh, oh the slap! slap. I, I like the slap. I like this the one. Slap and the bump. I think that is the most underrated handshake. Dude, of I all don't time. know. I like the uh, like you dap and then you you grab them. You hook with the. Oh, you hook finger. with the finger. You hook. With I don't the like the. Finger. I feel like I got. I don't like that as much. You guys really? know. I, I learned a new one. Give recently. this a feel, Billy. Give this a feel. I learned the hand hug. Do you guys know the hand hug? Oh yeah, this guy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just do like the hand hug. Like like it's this. a little right. more intimate though. I just yeah. like, like you, you, you and I would both. If like, I would oh, do you like this, mm -hmm. you would think in your head, "We're going five. We're going five, But yeah. you have to know that the hug's coming in. Oh, the scissor. The scissor. The scissor is nice. It's sensual. I think. Uh, but I think the slap and bump. It's it's the coolest in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It is because it's got a little extra flair onto it. It does. It does have a look. But I do. The hand hug's nice, but you have to have that rapport with somebody. Yeah, we're gonna get back to the boys in a second. But before we do, they're brought to you by our great friends at Game Time. You've seen us all over the place recently at all these sporting events. It is Barstool Sports, after all. And we're at all these events because of our good friends at Game Time. They're the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool, and they're the only place to get the best, cheapest, last-minute tickets. you got to use the Game Time app. I use the Game Time app. Everybody in this room uses the Game Time app. It is the best way to get those tickets. Super, super easy to use. Easiest website, easiest app that I've ever used to purchase tickets. The NFL schedule is officially out now, so get your tickets on game time and use promo code PMT. You can find the biggest last-minute price drops on game time. You can get seats that you thought you could never buy using the game time app. Check them out today. Download the game time app. Use promo code PMT when you create a login. So you're going to go to the account tab to create your login. Redeem code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Now, here's more Bustin' with the Boys Boys. All right, so, I'm, I'm going to go compliments for both of you. 
Ready for this? This, hey, this is, is real. textbook no, these psychology. Are real. Break them down. These are real. These are real. These are real. Hey, here's who what do, who got... wants it first? Who wants it Give first? Give it to Will. Give it to Will so All I know right. it's coming. Will, your videos where you're like, hey, buddy, come, come here. Oh, Can I talk to you for a second? Dude. Fucking hilarious. When when did you like come up with that? If you haven't seen them, like whenever someone has a bad take or someone does something stupid, Will pretends that he's like basically a father talking to his son, being like, let me, <laughs> let me, come, why don't you come over here for a second? Um, when did you start that? I love it. I think it's like sometimes you'll read some comments and I'll literally say to myself, like, this motherfucker, like, shut the fuck up. And then I thought to myself, like, how, how can I handle this? Because you know how it is on the internet at yeah. times. Like, you'll see comments and you're like, how can I have a little more fun with this? Right. So that's when I did the whole, like, let's take a walk to the panzer. Let's get you buckled in. Like, let's put you in the crib. Let's put you in the car seat. The possibilities are endless, but I have a lot of fun with what, it. What, what do you like, have? telling people to shut the fuck up, like, yeah. there's... God, dude. Like, and when somebody says something in person, you're just like, dude, shut the fuck up. What, what's it's like the, the best feeling. What's right? the next place? What's the, like give the give the viewers something that's coming up that you got like a, a spot you're thinking you could bury. I don't somewhere. know. Yeah, you could bury him. You could breastfeed him. Yeah. You could do it. You could do it. Yeah, breastfeed my wife. Like, let's let's, let's, yeah. like, let's yeah. get this for real. Charo. That's what I'm saying. Actually, ask Charo. Like, hey, sweetheart, I'm gonna do a bit. Yeah, you're fucking. You're fucking baby. Why don't you get on this tit? Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Like and then, uh, ready for yours, Taylor? I am. So, everyone really nervous, thinks. Though. No, everyone thinks there's another thing that you guys do that I fucking die laughing every time. It's when Will pretends to chug something, but everyone thinks that it's Will being great. Your commentary makes me laugh every fucking time. Well, that brings every me fucking Does that time. Bring you joy? We're like, slow down, bro. Slow down. Like, <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. you're a fucking monster. Oh. Like, wow. And Will, if you haven't seen it, Will like chugging videos, obviously. People chug and it's like, oh fuck, he chugs so fast. Will just sips it super slowly, and Taylor's just in the background narrating it, being like, "Bro, you are a beast!" Oh my! god. I don't think god. I've ever seen somebody put it down as fast as him. I don't think I've had it. I tell you what, I've had so many. I've had two emotions since I've been on this podcast, and both so dramatic. Yes, one just That's like overwhelmingly do. anger. Yeah, and happy. but then I'm like. I'm full of joy right now. We're gonna get now. you crying, crying. I legit feel like I just got, I just got a hug. I got, I just so, got a compliment hug, like instead of a hand hug. Yeah, but I was thinking about like what has made you guys pop a little more, and I think those type of videos where we get to see you guys maybe be uh, funny, not just on a podcast, but other things, yeah. has been a big part of it because I like those videos crack me up every fucking. You know time. what I think? I think uh, a lot of that, and I'm gonna throw one to you, Will. I think it has to do with Will breaking the stigma. There you go, a little oopy, because I think um, when it comes to like playing sports. There's like a idea of like everything you post is to be cool, whether you're getting on a jet or like this is the outfit I'm wearing or something right. like that. Will in a lot of ways, and, and there's other guys that try to make jokes, like kind of broke that a little bit and made it like, let's try to just be funny. Right. And there's a while there where you're like, I'm just going to throw shit at the wall and see what hits. And Will, I mean, Will's found a stride. Your boy's still out there treading water trying to find out what my, my vision is. Yeah. But it's Will's tough too shit because also like going in it, like, you know. Not that I'm discrediting myself as a player, but when you're actually in it and going in every day, like mm. there's a sense of you like walking around and guys seeing like what do, you post. Does I, that what's happen? That, to you? Like, what's that? Like, do people like see it in the Titans locker room? They're like, "Are you about to fucking podcast this, bro?" No, I think the boys in the room, the locker room, are pretty good. Vrabel, he likes to chirp. Right? That's He's the like, thing. It's yeah, like going Vrabel, to a team Vrabel meeting. Put your ass on a stake in in the team meeting room. Vrabel will be like, "Let's see what our social media manager's up to this weekend." And I'm just sitting there like asshole tight, like fuck. Yeah, no, he's about to get something up on my mind. And you know, your social, the social he'll media call manager, me like yeah. hey, when I was on the team the last time. He just by the end of the year, he was just calling me the social media manager. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember his name. That's so, well, that so funny. And yeah, Vrabel is. Uh, he does his fifteen minute bits in team meetings. Oh, he loves it. He, he, he loves. It up. He loves to sit there and tell jokes. And the thing is, it's like a room that has to laugh. Like right. the shit he says is pretty funny, but he also says shit. You're like, oh, okay, I probably wouldn't. Give that thing a strong. Like, yeah, I'm trying to make the team. Team. Like, yeah. that's fucking hilarious. So, some, yeah. <laughs> some coaches have have like these motivational tactics that they do. They like, you know, they set up way ahead of time. Sean Payton will put like <laughs> juice boxes in your locker and be like, "You got to stay juiced up this week." You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Vrabel, it seems like he spends more time like, like workshopping his bits, like writing jokes down before he comes in. He'll he's, have a he's few pretty now. fucking quick, dude. He has got some quick to him, some wittiness. But there's no like. One thing you got to give Rabel credit for is he doesn't do like the cliches, like you got to stay juiced yeah. type of vibes. Right. You know what I'm saying? He right. kind of he stays. He, now he'll, he'll his main one is I played 14 years. Listen, that, boys, I've been in these I got seats. Rings. That's so a I pretty know what good it's like. trump card to play. Yeah. Dude, it's yeah, a tough, tough trump card. Like, what are you gonna say to that? And yeah. and you can't chirp him for too like too long either. Like if you 
If you chirp Vrabel, he'll chirp back. Then you chirp him one more time, and then he comes with a fucking haymaker. Right, and he could he'll probably try and fight you. He could probably yeah. beat up like seventy percent of the locker. Like room. I, 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 I texted him, him. I texted him the other day, and I was like, "Hey, who are we playing week one?" And he texted me back and said, "Hopefully not the Cardinals." Mm. And I was like, just a massive <laughs> shot. I was like, holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> like, holy yo, it's shit. Tuesday. How dark? Yeah. How dark was that? Oh, bro, that was like. So for people who don't know, Taylor gave up five sacks. No, don't do that, dude. You know it's not five. Was he had Chandler, Chandler Jones has five? He had five sacks. I gave up two, but, but it was a on, it was a bloodbath the whole game. You know that idiots like us watch that and we see that he had five and that he was matched up against you sometimes. Yeah, yeah. and we say to ourselves, "Damn, Taylor gave that's up five pretty five much sacks. that's pretty much just like Twitter in general, right? It was yeah. that yeah. one yeah. clip too. Well, the one with, there's one there's another one with Buda Baker. Oh, you yeah. oh that to me, one, that's, that's, the one. that's the that's the so hardest. One. That was that was in a two minute. No, that wasn't a sack. We got the ball from that one. <laughs> Thank God. It's still dude. a tough clip. To hey, have. the worst part is, um, when I got hit by Buda Baker doing that, like at that point, my I was like so, like you want to see a man just unravel. Like watch that game. You'll see me just absolutely unravel emotionally and mentally. When Buda, I turn my shoulders and he catches me and I fly down. And I'm, I get up just completely defeated. And Buddha and Chandler Jones are like walking away, like dapping each other up. And Chandler goes, I told you. Oh, As they were jogging no. away. So they were like, dude, this guy. So what was it? Bro. Was it th- th- You were coming back from injury. Yeah. But was it not, you know, strong enough? Not, you know, you hadn't done I think it enough? It, it was more mental and, and confidence than yeah. anything else. Like oh, I wasn't, damn, I wasn't as strong. I wasn't as strong or as like uh yeah, or was like quick. I wasn't as confident in my bo- in like my body at that point, and but I was like so like I had to be out there week one, had to be out there week one, and then I got out there week one. And after the first series, I was like, holy fuck, like this is gonna be a long day, right? And then sure enough, dude, he took advantage of my ass. So if you're working on like the mental side of your game, obviously, like in the moment when you hear something like that, you're having a tough game. It's it's tough not to like go into a big spiral, right? It's tough not yeah. to go into a bad negative place. Is there something that you you've like? learn from that experience where you can in the moment try to catch yourself and try to try to keep yourself from going like completely checked out that's like that's the only game in my life i've ever been in a situation where like it's like hey i just want to get the fuck out of here <laughs> like that's this and in, in this in and this, this, and this yeah well no right now i feel fine now yeah the, the heat's kicked off we got the in cool, this interview yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right now. i know i'm sitting over here asking billy for a water we're, i'm like we, searching around for PFT water and i are buda baker and chandler jones right oh now. my god <laughs> i'm chandler hey He's the worst brutal. part is you, the I other day uh, <laughs> i posted something the other day and uh people kept tagging chandler jones and he commented on my instagram it was like y'all keep posting uh like uh tagging me in this stuff it's a new year and I just commented back and said, hey, don't be the bigger man. It yeah. makes it, it, makes yeah, it yeah. way worse. Way worse, bro. Even get worse, bro. Dude, that's and he laughed. Worse. I'm like, yeah. God damn. Yeah. But sure, he's a great guy. I, I, sure, he's a great guy. I'm actually interested to know, though, like, is there is there something that you can do? Is there, like, a, a mental tool that you can use in a game to get yourself to, like, snap yourself out of a bad mood? Well, there's, there's been other games where I'm, like, not playing well. It's like, hey, it just is what it is. You go to the next series and you kind of just play. Like, that's never been a huge issue during a game for me. Like, it's been, like, before a game or after a game type of thing. But this game in particular, it was just where I was at mentally with my knee, where I was at also a little bit physically, where I was just like, I didn't feel like I belonged out there. And like there were yeah. points in the year I was telling Willis on our podcast, Bust with the Boys subscriber, five stars. I was uh, t- telling on our podcast that like at some points last year, I'm like, how am I blocking these people? Right. Like, these guys got to be terrible if I'm blocking them, like even later in the year. And so it was just like the confidence was just totally shot the whole year. And it started with that week one for sure. So uh, in the film room, do you consider just like were you praying that you would get COVID after that game <laughs> no, so you wouldn't I didn't have think to go that. into the facility? But that's I think what I, I would have done for sure. Yeah. I would have like gone to a bar those, and just dude, drank out of every glass that was just left behind. I would be, come on, give me the cocoa. We did. It was actually a really cool thing that Vrabel did after the game. He like texted me. He's like, "Hey, come see me in my office." And whenever you get that after a game, it's just like, "Oh fuck, dude, I must have done something wrong, or I didn't play well, or something." And I knew I didn't play well, so I was like, "Oh, I'm about to get chewed out." And I get into Vrabel's office, and he's like, hey, I want you to know, like, you didn't lose us that game. Like, we all played bad. We, sh- we were going to lose the game regardless. Like, don't beat yourself up too much. Like, it's going to take time. And he was, like, very cool. And it was one of those rare moments where Vrabel was, like, you know, being, a, like, you know, being nice. Yeah. yeah so, you know, well, no, I, I'm I, actually I know, I know curious. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm curious, that, and both of you guys can answer this, but, like, we as fans, we freak out to everything. Right. Like, as you a should. loss like that. We're we're stupid. We're like Titans are trash. Cardinals the best team in the world. And like the, that's, and for eight weeks, the Cardinals were. Yeah, right. So how? I mean, I know it's 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 cliche that's said to the media like one week at a time. We don't we don't get too high, too low. How do you actually do that? I, it ne- it never makes sense to me because like I would get so high and so low right. that it would 
I wouldn't be able to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, we'll, Dude, we'll, I think like, so not playing, like being on the couch and watching games and then going in and, and doing it is like it gives you a perspective because before I get, would get to the Raiders or the Titans, um, you'd sit there and watch games and you'd almost want to tweet something like emotionally or like just saying something. And then you'd kind of, I would kind of resist. It's like, well, shit, I might be out there soon. So right. let me not say anything. But I think you just realize like you're in such a bubble in the season. It's hard to remove yourself. Like yeah. when Taylor was talking about social media and stuff earlier, there was just there's just like a time where it's it's kind of like not taking yourself so seriously because we're in a profession where all we fucking do is take ourselves so seriously. Right. That's all we do. It's just it's alphas. It's people trying to figure this out. Like who's gonna be macho? Constantly who's gonna be the man? Yeah, yeah, constantly posturing. I gotta make the team. I can't look dumb in front of the coach. Oh, this dude laughed at me. I hope this person doesn't feel that way since he just laughed at me. And then you have the whole internet commenting about it. It's like. You're just, you're in such a bubble. And if you're like, like when I wasn't playing and then once I, like last this past year being on the Raiders and kind of enjoying that this could be my last year, my last time playing football and just enjoying it for what it is, like the game of football. And people trying to bust my balls about not playing. And then I'm just like, I post pictures of myself standing on the sideline. It's just realizing that like shit isn't near as serious as you make it right, out to be. Yeah, right. because, that, because that stuff blows over. In those few weeks, like after the whole Arizona stuff and the Rocky season, like there are weeks like you're sitting there talking to Taylor and like, there's nothing you can really say with somebody because you realize like they're they're like you know you're like, you're like in it you're fucking in it right yeah. there's and there's, no there's to, in those situations there's no way to zoom out right like, there's no and then you're and oh, then it's not as big of a deal right as and now yeah. he's months later talking about it in such detail on a podcast because now you like gain perspective about what it actually was and now next time you do it he'll probably handle he'll probably handle situations or in the moment when you're playing bad a lot differently because you realize like oh this shit doesn't last forever like I'm just I'm fucking in this moment and I just need to like get over the hump right. Yeah. I think a lot of other players probably appreciate the fact that you guys are kind of the ones that are like, I don't know how to say it. And like, I've always heard British people say taking the piss and I'm, I'm not, I'm still not sure exactly what it means, but it's almost like you're like popping that balloon that everyone's like walking around so uptight. Like you said, everything's super serious in the NFL. And then it takes one person to be like, wait, what the fuck? We can still joke about this. And then everyone's like, yeah. kind of deflates and they're like, Oh God. Yeah. That's, it's like refreshing to see that as a perspective, but in such like a high pressure situation, I feel like it's got to be healthy for a lot of guys to have some sort of outlet like you guys have. Like, I don't know. I feel like most players should have burner accounts if they don't have them already. Yeah, it sounds like you, you guys know? have a couple of issues right <laughs> now about burner oh, accounts. Oh yeah, yeah. I have two burner accounts. Do you I've, actually? Do you have the burner? Bob and Content Kim. I've, I've accessed I've both got, their Twitter accounts. I, I started a burner account about a year and a half ago, and it changed my life. Like really? on Twitter. What? Oh man, I just well, I don't use it to like talk oh, shit about anybody. Before you say anything I just else, tweet are, out are all my worst serious? opinions. Are you being are you being dead serious? Yeah, right now? yeah, it was a big thing. Okay. Billy had to try to hunt it down and figure out who I Did was. Did you figure it out? No, because he's a moron. Now, do you guys no. have the burner? Is it burner Reddit accounts Poor that Billy. I'm reading that I'm seeing? No, 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 that's um. These are Twitter accounts. Yeah, burner Reddit accounts. If you're trying to get like your own propaganda out there, that's that's. This is like the dude's name Zeke or Deke or something, right? Yeah, that's sussing with the boys. Is that what like is that what KFC is all wrapped up about right now? Yeah, so he's he's trying to figure out who it is. Um, I personally don't really care. I'm sure that some people here at the company talk shit about us on Reddit. Oh yeah, you'd yeah, have I mean, to assume. It, absolutely, it, but it's like, a I don't... company completely based around See. content. Like you got to assume like there's going to be a way for people to vent probably yeah. on Reddit or probably on Twitter. Yeah, I that's, that's what I do. I honestly don't care. Read it out loud. From he Youngstown said, Bob, hearing buzz in the office that Will Compton just retired from football and PMT, Bob. <laughs> that, that might get some traction. But, but honestly, having, <laughs> having a burner account, I think, is in retweeted. a way mentally healthy. I think it's good to just be able to get the thoughts like out there, mm. especially if you're like an NFL player and you're expected to, you know, like always be buttoned up and everything well, you say is a reflection uh, yeah, on the team. Yeah. There's definitely a, a way you have to be. I never in my life have thought about having another Twitter account or any other account that wasn't me. And so the thought of it is like such it's a crazy thought to Yeah, me, because to it, it would be all consuming, like especially when you guys like Kevin Durant has talked about it and I actually think he's been way better once his burner account got exposed and he was able to just tweet his real thoughts from his real account and he just goes after people. I think it's hilarious. And it's bro. awesome. That's right. Fuck, it's awesome. And he just goes after Kevin people. Durant? Yeah. yeah, my boy. He follows you, right? Yeah, my boy. Yeah, I mean he is really. he is one of the best players in the NBA, so he does get a little more leeway. Like you yeah. have to be really, really good. Gotta be really to good. To be able to do that. Um, when people say like locker room distractions, is there ever actually a distraction? Is ever anyone distracted by any of these distractions? Ooh, I don't. That's a good question. So. Yeah, it's, I'm sure. We I'm sure the it. answer is yes. 
Because I'm sure at one point there's got to be something that's like... Right. I'm sure Antonio Brown at one point was an actual distraction. But not because of what he posted online or anything, because he's Antonio Brown, probably. Maybe, or maybe he's he posted online about balloon. somebody, his teammate or something like that. I don't yeah. know. He did, he, did, never, he was he he was kind of a distraction when he was going live from like post game locker rooms when like Tomlin was ca- talking to them and he didn't know he was live like that yeah. stuff. I think Juju did that too. Right, right, right. Like that's yeah. a bad move. Yeah, that's, that's a really a bad, bad move. move. That's a that's move. A, that's, that's exactly have... what it is. It's just a bad move. Yeah, right, that's a and, bad. And move. And it's not really distracting. Like if I saw that, I'm not like, oh, my season's fucked. You right. know what I'm saying? It would just be like, oh, okay. So I don't do that. Yeah. What would be an example? Well, I, I mean, Will, you were on the Raiders at the end of the year. They went through one of the craziest seasons. You weren't there when all that stuff went down. But you know, between Henry Ruggs, between Gruden wow. going, getting fired, like all these things, and they start sl- like they they have a coach change. Like, was it, what'd you sense when you were in the locker room? By the time I got there, like, everybody, like, I've spoken at length about Coach Passaccia. Like, everybody loved Coach Fox Passaccia. Foxhole guy. Ready, yeah, Foxhole guy. We ready bet to, on him a couple weeks in a row because Booger told us that, and we, we, he was, he's we the man, bro. Handsome, and and yeah. they have, like, a good locker room. So I, you couldn't really sense, like, any of the distraction that happened prior to that. But, like, a, you know, a good example, like, being, a, being in Washington, like, when stuff was going down with, like, RG and Kirk Cousins and RG having his comeback here, but he wasn't playing that well, and Kirk ends up taking over the job. He's throwing three picks in the game should you go back with RG again like there is a lot of stuff to where the medium people write things where if you're not tight in the locker room and in the team meetings like I think that's what Vrabel does such a good job as if is you're having a team meeting literally We're really gassing day. Vrabel in this thing mm-hmm. yeah well, but he it, listens the, he, oh, does listen. he, he does listen he does what up but what up, like Braves? I think when 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 you do that, you're able to like control the Coach narrative or talk about yeah. stuff out in the open. Whereas on Washington, there wouldn't be a whole lot of team meetings and you wouldn't talk about it. So a lot of news that you would see, you're reading online. So that in itself becomes a distraction right. because you're not necessarily getting it like from the head man or Correct. from any. You're not getting it direct. You're getting it from other sense. sources. Can you um can you confirm or deny a story that we've been told? I won't say who told us this, but in uh. in those days in D.C. Um, it was uh, it was alleged that Colt McCoy was super uh-huh. well liked by everybody, right? And I think that's not that's not far fetched to say that. Like yeah, that's everyone, one of Will's best friends. Uh-huh. Everyone seems to like Colt McCoy. Uh huh. And he had a party. He decided he was going to have a barbecue at his house, and he invited everybody. Will loves barbecues. Kirk Cousins mm-hmm. was a starting quarterback at the time, and mm-hmm. Kirk Cousins got word on the street that there was this party going on. He got upset because he's the starting quarterback. He should be the one having everybody over. He found out that like his linemen and stuff were going to go to Colts. He put the word out that there was a party. Everybody was still going to go to Colts. He had to go to Coach Gruden, Jay Gruden, and be like, "Hey, can you tell, can you tell Colt McCoy to not have his party?" Well, first he said, "Trade him." Trade him. Yeah. First, first <laughs> cut him or trade him. Secondly, can you tell him not to have his party at the same time that I'm going to have my party? And then mm. allegedly everybody went to Kirk's party for like an hour and then left and had the real party at Colts. I was not at either of these parties, and I can't. Liar. Wasn't invited. No. Liar. Hand up. Hand on anything. Liar. Mm-hmm. I was not at any of these parties, and I do not, uh, I wouldn't say confirm or deny, but I, I don't remember Colt having like some barbecue party, because again, I wasn't, I wasn't invited, I guess. <laughs> uh-huh. Would it surprise you to know that Liar. that was true? You know, um, some stuff would be surprising, but some stuff, no, not surprising. Oh, wow. What, what an answer. Would you like that? What would not be surprising? He's saving you know, it for his podcast. This is why we should never yeah, interview other podcasts. That's true. Fuck us, dude. Take all They've our juicy stories. Taken all of our stuff. You know, yeah, it wasn't cool. like uh, I mean, guys yeah. did love. Cole. Yeah, we had to unpack that for a second. What I, you, you guys ripping us off? Real quick. What unpack what? The fact that they think we stole their thing because they did a one a couple episodes in advance. But they don't. No, but that's I mean, the thing. Though, guys, that's the thing. Though. You guys they're not chasing. They're, us they're for not actually trying to like. They're just. They're joking on us. They're trying to get. They're trying to get us. They're trying to divide. They're trying to get their audience. I told you you can get in her skin. Who did there was some guests we had on recently that fucking Will was in the mentions being oh, like, come on it. my show, please. That's Wait, a, what was we, that? we will Who do was that. that. What are you talking about? We we'll had a guest hey, on we'll recently. Anybody. You're like, please come on my show. Well, the That's thing is, not like, fucking what true. What was it? Oh, are we talking about Max? You were tagged in the same oh, tweet yeah, I was tagged Max, in. Oh, yeah, Max, Max, come on, please no, come no, no, on no. our show. Somebody, uh-huh. said, uh, <laughs> somebody said he should come on our show, and I responded to it. You said that. I saw, Max, please, he, please, please. My man Max favorited whatever somebody said to him coming on Bustin' with the Boys. Mm-hmm. So that's when I reached out and said, yo, you're more than welcome please. to come on Bustin' with the Boys. I honestly never have a problem with that because, like, <laughs> no, I don't either. They we, work for we yeah. colleagues. We, we did that. Yeah, we also I know. Yeah, how did you guys start? That's you guys automatically hit all that, the guests, that's right? The old, that's the oldest trick in the book. It's yeah. to just be like, 
come on part of my take but it's to discuss. Funny to, it's funny to get you to have to explain it when I don't even need you to explain it because I saw it and I was like, yeah, Max are should we go on with them. He's awesome. Are you col- Are we colleagues that you root for? Yes. I root for all there my are some co- uh, uh, Is that true? Yeah. You root yeah. for all your colleagues? Yeah, definitely. Do we? After this all week, do we root for all of our colleagues? I do. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Some of them I definitely root for everyone. Do you really? Yeah. Would you take a polygraph? Honestly, I don't. I I never really root against somebody. Uh-huh. I that's not. I don't. Other people you don't quote unquote fuck with I don't, in this building. Well, yeah. there are people that I'm closer mm-hmm. with than I'm not closer mm-hmm. with. That's I don't, yeah, that's fair. But do I, you do you get along with everybody I here? I do not shun anyone. There's nobody that I will like I walk away from in the hallway. Them. Yeah, but here's the, here's my here's my question, and I'm yeah. and listen. I just I don't, is this the camera here? I don't know anything. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know nothing. Right? I I don't know anybody's real business. I kind of tried to play catch up a little bit this week. Why? Why you? Why would you shun or not? Fuck I just don't with? want to be around him right now. I probably look. I'm, I'm probably at the be... end of the day. I'm probably too soft and give too many second chances. And I'll, I told him to his face on Monday. I was like, at some point, we're I'll, I'll be fine with you. Right now, I'm just not. So yeah. like, and what... I, there will be a moment like summer's coming up. I won't be. You know, people will be out of the office a little bit. I I would almost guarantee that by fall time, like it's not like Mush and I will. We won't have a relationship that we had before because I considered him a friend. So that's the part that people miss. Like, I considered him a friend, so that was part of it. But we'll be back to a point where, like, yeah, you know, we're we're not, like, cool, cool, but we're we're good. You, you guys know will I mean? work together again. Yeah, yeah, just right, be, there'll right. be a blemish. There'll There's be an just asterisk. a little bit of time that I little need asterisk. to just fucking chill out and be like, I don't really want you, like, sitting near me and, like, give me, give me like, a month. And then yeah. I'll be good. And I don't, I'm, 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 we're not going to be too much of a dead horse here, but I'm, really, I'm really asking. Yeah. I'm really asking because no, I, I just want to know. Chances. I want to know. Is, like... What made you think? Okay, I don't. It's just because you're I, fucking boys with Hank like that. It was a lot of things. It was it was the fact that I'm very very tight with Hank. Mm-hmm. I've been working with him for a decade. I also was friends with Marty, and we also spent a lot of time together. Marty, Hank, PFT was there for a lot. Like all of us spent a lot of time together the last three months. And like I start replaying. Like we took him to Madison, rolled out the red carpet, did a whole thing. We sat in Madison at lunch. All PMT and Marty, and he spent like a half hour talking about like exes and girls and stuff the whole time he's dating Rhea. Like so, like shit like that. Where I'm like, wait, why? Why were you doing that? You know what I mean? So I like, those kind of moments are like, yeah. I just don't. I, it kind of just bothered me. And again, I'll probably be fine within a month. But when I heard and the way I heard, I was like, dude, that's not cool. Like we were we were literally on the road together for two months. And, and you could have said something then. Yeah, anything. So I I, I don't feel like anger about that but, yeah but when i look back on it's it, it it is a sign that like i don't know I, it, it's a lack of trust maybe mm-hmm, because you right. don't mm-hmm. you're, you're clearly holding something back from people right. that like i i share everything with these guys like good bad whatever it just is what it is i'm never trying to like play a chess match or anything right. like that i feel like once you start playing chess matches with people you're going to get beat eventually right and you're going to make a bad move yeah. and it's just it's not worth the time and mental effort to do it, which is why i'm not like i'm not playing a chess match against marty right now uh, probably kick the shit out of him in a chess match if that was the case. You think but, so? Uh, you play chess like that? No, I'm just I'm guessing based on Marty. But I've been very. Here's the thing. I've been very. I don't feel like that's ever productive. I feel like there's so much, so many more things that I can be using my mental energy on than like actively trying to like uh, you know expend some of that on hating. So directly, yeah, no, all that I don't negative energy. On I somebody. actually talked to him on the phone yesterday. This is breaking news. I talked to him on the phone yesterday for about 20 minutes, and I was like, dude, like I'm. I just told him everything. I was like, <laughs> "Listen, man, like this is why I'm I was upset. I'm already we're already 4 days past it and I've already cooled down like probably from 100 if I was 100 mad, mm-hmm. I'm probably at like 50 now. Like that's how fast I cooled down. Yeah. I'm not a grudge guy. I don't spend time just hating things. So I told him that. I was like, "Look, dude, if you just keep your head down and we kind of stay out of our ways out of each other's way for a couple weeks, month, whatever, we'll be good eventually." Yeah. So like I'm not I just don't have time to hate people like that. But it, just, it was it was shocking. It was it was just the combination of everything. Fi- the way I found out, the fact that I considered Marty a friend, how close I am to Hank, all that stuff. Throw it all together. That he sits next to us. That he sits next to Hank. Throw it all together, and that's why I had my reaction. How, in a way that it would work out, like where you didn't have any anger for Marty, like. What would you have liked to see happen if they were on, on us right away? If, like, hey, we yeah, hooked up. Yeah. If if Rhea and uh, Marty were like, hey, we yeah. hooked up. Rhea. Yeah. I think that, I think <laughs> I would. Is that Rhea? Rhea. Yeah. If I had just had time. Sorry, no disrespect. Rhea. Rhea. Yeah. No. Hank found out 
Hank found out a few weeks before mm. everyone else found out, and he said that he was very mad for 48 hours, and then he was able to, like, you know, calm down. We got none of that. You know what I mean? Like, we found out we were at the Canelo fight, and it was like, what's this? And Oof. then it was just, you know. So, I yeah, and obviously Marty doesn't have to tell me, but if he had, I think my reaction would have been a little different. I yeah. also, if I was in high school, I would have shunned. And I did in high school to, like, friends that broke up with, like, their girlfriends and stuff. It was like, okay... I'm shunning this person. This person's no longer invited places. I'm going things like that. Yeah. I just don't. I don't do have. I don't have yeah. the energy or like I don't have the desire to do that right now. Hank knows I've got his back till the end of time. Like I'd rather just focus on like me and Hank. We're good. Anything he needs, I'm there for him. You name it, he's got it. Like and he's and, and Hank's Hank's proven like he's been so loyal. And we, I was actually telling these guys about this earlier. Like Hank in his new job. That's why he's not here right now. By the way, is he's actually he's running the company. Um, but and Hank he didn't want to talk about burgers. Yeah, and he wanted to duck you. Uh, Hank has gotten a lot of shit over the years, like kind of as a joke, but sometimes from people that don't understand the joke, saying all he does is press record. Hank is a genius in his own way. Like he, everything he touches works. I think it's a perfect role that he's got. So I'm very happy to see him. I want to support Hank moving forward. I just don't feel the need to like. I'm not gonna go out of my way to just like. I don't have that negative energy to give out. Yeah, and I, my shunning is not like it was just literally just move seats. Like I, I told Billy he had to go to the thing last night with him. It's not like I'm gonna just actively be like trying to stop him every spot. It's yeah, just, I don't want to. You still fuck probably, with him right I now. probably am like a little bit too overprotective of Hank. I'll hand up. Well, you know what I mean, what, like it, it's if just, I'm Hank, I've known him since he was 18. Like if, if I'm Hank and I'm if this whole thing goes down in the last 72 hours, like not just Tom Brady, but it seems like everyone's kind of yeah, no, like you know you're team loved. Hank in a yes. sense. Damn, like yes. good for him. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's got to he's, he's got to be doing a deal. Up. I have uh, two more questions because I we got to wrap up. I got to run to the yak. One is for you, Taylor. Your tattoos. Yeah. I want to be a tattoo guy. Okay. I don't know how to start. Pinterest. I love your tattoos. Do you? Yes. No, I legitimately think you have very cool tattoos. Thank you very much. I, yes. Honestly, I'd go to Pinterest right away. Do yeah. you care if they have meaning or not? Not really. Yeah, go to Pinterest and then find out what you like. But can you just become styles. a tattoo guy like that? Like, when did you get your first one? I was 17 or yes. 18. Yeah. 17? Wait, I missed the boat. Your first right one here? has to have meaning, You missed right? the boat? Right you reinvent yourself, what's your, what's your first one? Your first one has to have meaning. You just got to get tattoos and my say, first fuck one, it. My first one was just I'm my last name. this weekend. I went to this tattoo shop in Arizona, and they, I got Old English, Lawan, but they put an M instead of a W, so it was Laman. <laughs> oh, my God. And then... Uh, the man. My second one was this mustache. That's cool. The third one I got was a Roman numeral six for my best friends in high school and a girl's initials who I proposed to from uh, when I was leaving for Michigan. Didn't work out. And then, yeah, I just started getting tattoos over and over. Got tribal and then I was... Do you I have one, Will? Here. No tattoos. No, Will, he doesn't. He's, he's not a tattoo guy. But if you're actually serious... I do want, but I don't know how to start. If I, if I were you, dude, I would go to Pinterest and find out what you like. Now, are you a little worried because as, you know, both of us fathers of two... Have your kids been like, ooh, that's cool. I want one of these. Yeah, my uh, so my oldest daughter wants tattoos. She's so, like, I can't wait to have tattoos like so. daddy. I told her when she's 18. Okay. Because here's the, all the tattoos I got before I was 20 are I'm trying to erase off my body right now. Right. I'm trying to erase them all, except for this mustache. I, f I love the mustache. That yeah. and my right-hand man. This dude is. Oh, that's kind of, oh I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little clever. deal, right? Yeah. It's clever. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to erase all those. Sleeve. What's that? I'm going to get a plaid half sleeve eventually. A plaid half sleeve? Yeah, well, I just tell people, like, uh, that's my first tattoo that I'm going to get. Yeah. And then I just say that I'm eventually going to get it. A plaid. And I just yeah. never... I've never <laughs> seen a plaid tattoo before. There you go. That would be original for yeah. sure. It might be cool. Um, all right. And then my it. last question, Roback question, R-H-O-B-A-C-K, no big deal. Take 20% off your first purchase. Do you guys have Roback? Oh, we love Roback. Well, yeah, okay, it's, good. it's really good. good. JP's good. probably wearing Roback. Where yes. Promo code TAKE, 20% off, Q-Zips, hoodies, we got some for you. Um, you either of you can answer this, Taylor. You were there. Um, one, two, or three. Which interception was the worst from Ryan Tannehill in that game against the Bengals? Oh my god! Because they're all like, I was thinking about it. They're like first your, they're play like of the game kids. is special. Goal line is like really bad, and then like like oh shit, we just lost the game. Like they all have very unique. Holy fuck, that sucked. Yeah, I think the first one was like. <laughs> Whoops, you know what I'm saying? It was like a whoopsie daisy. Uh, the second one was a freak interception by the nickel blitzing and then tipping uh, it to Kilton, himself. I think. Yeah. yeah, who's got wheels, Insane. by the way. And then the third one, I and listen, <laughs> this is all insurance policy. Of, I don't play quarterback. I have no idea how to read defenses. Third one is we got to fucking go win this game, and I don't know if it was an accident or not or what the deal was. I don't know what the deal with the third one was. So which one do you think was the worst, Will? Man, either that first or Don't third one. Don't fucking take a deep breath. Like you're about to dissect this whole thing on us right now. Hey, I'm, well, I'm, I'm a free agent. Oh, what I was tough, yeah. What I, I was, was there. I was, I was literally there. Yeah, I played with Ryan too. He's a phenomenal wait, 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 guy. Saying? 
It sounds like you put life. a lot of thought into this, actually. Like you've you've considered. No, I'm this. sitting here thinking about that. And I'm thinking that's a good question. The second one's the it's the that one's the bottom. It's either the first one or the third one because the first one's kind of just like oh, fuck, dude. You looked at the dude the whole time. I know, mm -hmm. and I had I bet you guys that day. Which and is I, always I, a bad sign when I start the, believing hey, in you guys. But, if but, you want but, to bet but, on the Titans, we well, go ahead. I was gonna say, my thought was like, it's "Come on now, fault. come on, big, Sorry. come on, big." My thought was like, and not even as much on Ryan, but it's like hey, we were we were running up the boys. We got the boys running a play action pass, with, and one side just two tight ends, and they're staying in the block. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else to do. I, what do you expect out of Ryan? Yeah. And then the third down one, the third down one was tough because you're trying, pretty you're, pretty trying to fucking, thing. you're trying to fucking, you're trying, you're trying to go down and win the game. <laughs> yeah, what's that? What you think? It's a pretty regular thing to have said, man, pro. <laughs> Are you yeah, I know, but first play of the game? You're trying to take a shot downfield. Everyone thinks Derek But that wasn't even a shot downfield. Everyone, everyone, yeah, there was two reads on that play. It was either AJ or Julio. And I, they, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I watched okay. it. I'm saying, you have a seven-man pro because you're thinking, you're thinking to yourself, it's a first game back uh, Derek Henry's had. You guys so everyone no in ball. the world thinks we're giving the ball to Derek first. Derek's out there. Everyone stays in. Linebackers are shooting up. That safety just did something he never does. The you, answer is all three of them. Is that the answer? Yeah. Oh, there was a right answer. Yeah, there to was a right answer. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you upset that that uh, Ryan's not going to teach Malik Willis how to throw three interceptions no, in a playoff no, game? No, I don't think so. I'm not upset about that. For the record, when when you guys signed with Barstool, we had a press conference. We're like, we're not teaching these guys shit. That's fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so look how well we've done. Thing, yeah, and look how well yeah. we've, we've done. We've actively tried. It's to not kill our job to mentor actually. these guys. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we ended up. Hey, but if I if I could say if I get everything, well, it's it's like if I could say something. If I could, it's like what Ryan's saying about Malik. Hopefully, hanging around enough, like he'll pick up some of the stuff we do. That's what you guys did with your like, entire. I, I, the sound bit, I think the sound bite was bad. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, sound, the sound bite was bad. Honestly, I don't care. Like that's that's the right answer. That's what he yeah. should say, yeah. dude. It's it's not like, Ryan's job to mentor the should, young guy. Like this it's, guy, it's on the young guys. It's definitely the young guy's job to like pick get as much from the vet as you fucking can because this dude's done it for a long time. Right. It's not like Ryan's not gonna. You you never think I'm going to go out of my way and do like this is in my job responsibility or my job description to mentor somebody else to teach him the how sound to take bite my was, job. Yeah, the sound bite was. Tough, but it's like he doesn't. Ryan didn't mean nothing but malicious. And by that. If like, I was if I was Ryan, I probably would have just left that one alone. Yeah, yeah. You almost, yeah you I would have said I, I would have been like, yep. And then I'd been like, fuck you, Malik. Yeah. And then I saw the person. <laughs> yeah. If I really felt that way, like when, when I first got to the Titans, Michael Ruse was the left tackle. I DM'd him on Twitter and I said, hey, dude, I would love if you like, and I could sit down and like learn the playbook. Never heard a thing. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Never heard a response. Yeah, why I would he? And that's okay. Do you feel it, stupid sending that? I feel stupider the older yes. I get, yeah, too. Yeah, right, it's right. the one that keeps biting at the apple for right. me. Yeah, yeah, you would, would definitely be like, like, like you're oh, thinking, man, was I thinking? You're thinking like you're hungry to learn, like you want to go in there and do I'm all the right things. Yeah, I'm trying to show the vet, too. Yeah, you're trying to make him like you, but you don't realize that by him teaching you everything, he's going like he's going to lose money. You're because quite of that. literally st taking money out of his kids' mouth. And it's, yeah, it's That's money. Crazy. He's feeding his kids' money. <laughs> kids' mouth. I'm taking his kids' money's mouth. Money dude. out of his kids' mouth. Uh, if it was, if he was like 42 years old, I think it's a fair question to ask Ryan Tannehill. But like he's he's still like kind of in the prime of his career, right? Yeah. Like why would he be expected to teach this guy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, that's a tough deal. Yeah. Also, also yeah. Uh, had a question to ask you. Billy has this theory about the guy that you just mentioned, Derrick Henry. So Love he's a Billy. Theory. Right, well, I'm with this. Could, yeah. could you bring up the first great running back? Why does Billy have a pad and a pen? He's, the he's first got this question of written down. He's an iPad or a, oh, you wrote it down? Yeah, because yeah, he had a I'm bad experience Ryan. with Ryan yeah, Whitney earlier no, no, no. this week. So. I, I know you want to bury him. No, 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 no. I don't want to. For the record, Will's trying to bury Ryan. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I want. I wanted to see something. Taylor, I'm not going to do it. Don't listen. Don't let him try. Listen, last time you started playing that game, Dan, what happened? Last time you played that game. I had to kill myself. Yeah, you had to kill yourself. Yeah. I to, we will have to talk to your son. Yeah, yeah. That was tough. My son texted so, him and said, why is my daddy hanging from the ceiling? Yeah, what a bit you stayed stayed. Dude, with that shit was so funny. Yeah. That they shit were, was so funny. They were fucking with me, and I just pretended that I committed suicide, and my son took the phone and was like, why is my daddy dead? Nothing says humor like murder mm -hmm. or killing yourself. Or a Go ahead, Billy. What you texting, got, buddy? Yeah, yeah what Go you ahead, got, Billy. Billy? End with this. Been walking no, out. I had this theory that Derrick Henry has super long legs for his height. Like yeah. the, the I didn't um, kill my family in PFT. Of oh, his like legs, wanted? the rest yeah, of his body. His I feel like it's actually detrimental <laughs> in short yardage between the tackles because people can wrap up his legs more. And it's there's been a couple times where it's like been proven right, but every time he like does well in short yardage, it's like in a sweep or he's bouncing out of the tackles. Yeah. So that's just something to think about. If now. you listen to Bustle with the Boys, this, this, is, <laughs> this has been this has been talked about in length. Like yeah. that's just like that's his oh, build. Like, oh, your boy wow. RC, oh, no. your boy RC yeah. brought that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this uh, is, Ryan you guys talked about Derrick Henry in the hole. No problem. Go
I think he's he's big and tall, and I think a lot of people had like come at him for that. But I mean, he's insane. I mean, I'm not insane. saying anything about yeah, he's, that. He's but it's just like, you can't. You're saying his long Derek, legs are detrimental in short yards. Yeah, I just situations. think everybody's like, oh, Derrick Henry, like fourth and one, like Derrick Henry would have been the MVP dive. this year if he didn't get hurt. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm not I saying really he's bad. That. Same with me. Yeah, I would have been so? MVP no, too. No, if yeah. I hadn't gotten hurt, I would. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> if I'm playing the entire year, I'm uh-huh. probably getting uh-huh. defensive player of the year. You yeah. think so? Yeah. Yeah. yeah why not? You can't prove him wrong. Yeah, RG3 <laughs> would have won like just nine like, Super hey, Bowls. Yeah. Just like if the Titans signed me, we're winning a Super Bowl. You did say that. That's a fact. You did say that for the boys. That's crazy. For the boys. Yeah. That's um, wild. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys busting with the boys. Go check it out. YouTube podcast. They're very very funny. You can go back listen. They had Bert on couple weeks ago they had kfc and fights on we got to come down we'll come down we'll we need do you it. to come down in yeah are you guys actually gonna come down you're just no, saying no, that i'm actually nope. i might uh-uh. be in nashville in like three weeks we'll be here I'll there you are you know. really i think so yeah i think i'm gonna be down there hey, we'll exchange our numbers we'll, okay. we'll figure it out um, Sounds good. but we appreciate you guys everyone go check them out they are very very funny and we root for them because they are our colleagues thanks guys mm-hmm. Love Thank you. you guys. Busting with the boys. Boys, we're brought to you by SoFi. We love SoFi. Getting your money right is easier with SoFi, the first investing platform to offer stocks, ETFs, automated investing, and cryptocurrency too, all in one app. Whether you're eager to get started with investing or you already know the ropes and you want to diversify your portfolio, SoFi has your back. No commissions on trading stocks and ETFs. That's right. No commissions on trading stocks and ETFs, plus no account fees or hidden fees. You can use fractional shares that start as low as $5 to buy brand name stocks, even if you don't have a couple grand lying around. They have complimentary financial planners that are ready to help with any questions, whether you're stuck on where to start or if you need help deciding what to do next. Save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. We love SoFi. I downloaded the app the other week. They're hooking, they're hooking us up with these accounts. We're going to be trading stocks. We're going to be buying ETFs. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. And we love SoFi. Again, they've got no commissions on their trading stocks or ETFs and no account fees. And they've got those fractional shares. So they start as low as five bucks. You can buy name brand stocks, even if you don't have a bunch of money ready to trade with. We love SoFi. You can check them out by going to SoFi.com slash take. You can open an account and learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock. That's $1,000 in stock. S-O-F-I dot com slash take. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member F-I-N-R-A slash S-I-P-C. Okay, we're going to wrap up with hockey just to put a bow on it. The final from Phoenix, uh, Dallas Mavericks 123 Phoenix Suns, 90. Chris Paul finished with 10 points. Huge, huge second half. Uh, They just ran out of time, Big Cat. I don't – I really, like – I actually am mad at Chris Paul. Oh, I am too. I'm furious at him. He he robbed us. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Well, no, I'm mad because that was such an ass kicking. That was such an embarrassment that there's a small part of me that feels bad. And I don't want to feel bad. I want to revel in this. I want to have fun with it. But there's a small part of me that's like, holy fuck. Maybe everything that we've said as dumb, like, kind of a shtick, but not really, like, you know, narratives is true. Maybe he does stink. Well, I mean, all the evidence would point you in that direction. They put a graphic up on TNT in the fourth quarter. It was sad. It was so sad when they were doing the lap around the stadium, not only, like, with the sad... Suns fans, but also just like zooming in on Chris Paul, who I think Chris Paul put on like a full, like his entire street clothes during the game on the sidelines. Mm-hmm. He just got all bundled up. Um, but they put this thing up there. I'm pulling up the exact graphic right now that detailed Chris Paul's history in the playoffs. In best of seven series, Chris Paul lost series after leading 2-0. 2008 West Semis versus Spurs. 2013 West first round versus the Grizzlies, 2016 West first round versus the Blazers, and 2021 NBA Finals versus the Bucks. Add to that list the 2022 uh, second round against the Dallas Mavericks. And there have been a lot of injuries in there and like weird shit, but man, it's bad. It's bad. And the Suns were the best team all year. In the NBA. I think he was crying on the bench, actually. Oh, see, he's robbing it. He's robbing us. Like we needed No, this is this isn't right. Let's he... go to let's go to our good friend Ryan Rosilla for comment. <laughs> Ryan tweeted awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. 
He's uh, we're gonna we're gonna give him some time. We'll hopefully have him on again. And he hasn't tweeted since then. That was an hour ago. Yeah, it's it's not, it's not good for our boy. We're we're being nice to Ryan. We're getting that that trending. Be nice to Ryan. Hashtag be nice to Ryan. All right, let's talk hockey. Let's start with Friday night. PFT Jake go down to DC. Um, look like it was going to be an incredible, incredible win for the Capitals, and then it was stolen from you. Overtime loss. Uh, thoughts and give us. Just dump it out. Dump out the the titties. You guys look good. Yeah. So we were we were going to the game. We acquired the fake boobs. Uh, we had a swimsuit. Memes ran out, and I think he went to Nordstrom Rack, purchased this very tasteful bikini top for the game. We were going into the arena. I, I we figured that the best way to get in, get in would just be to put the boobs on underneath my t-shirt on the way inside. Uh, got through the initial line of security. There was a second line of security. One of whom was an AWL. That was on the lookout for me. Fucking asshole. He he had me on radar. He tracked me in, pulled me aside, and I got like ambushed by like three or four security guards. And they were talking to me. They're like, "So why why do you have breasts, sir?" And I was like, "Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm keeping them under my shirt. And I've got a bikini. I would not have worn the bikini over the nipples if I was just planning on exposing the fake breasts." Right. And he was like, "What section are you in? Let me see your tickets." He's like, "Oh yeah, these guys are definitely going to be on TV. You need to give us the fake boobs." So we had to turn over the fake boobs, unfortunately, on our way in. We had to improvise and say, okay, we'll just go tarps off for the lads. And then Jake, man of his word, true to his word, took his shirt off, was wearing the bikini top for like the first two periods, basically. Right, looked Jake? great. He looked awesome. Looked great. Jake was yeah. glowing. Yes. I had argued that the backup punishment was worse. I don't like taking my shirt off. Yeah, I know. I so. was actually thinking about that. What's Jake going to do? And you guys both, yeah. man of your words. Um, how, though, I mean, I think everyone wants to know. Post game, we saw the handshake. Um, how how brutal was it, PFT? I mean, I knew it was going to be bad. I I was... we also agreed before the game to do a handshake when they were doing a handshake on yeah, the ice. Yeah, we would do a handshake line of our own. Yes, yeah, I knew so that there would be. I a waited handshake. a few minutes. I didn't do it right when they scored. He didn't do it immediately when they scored. Part of that was I was laying down fully on the ground uh, in just despair. I was like, I was like Coach Buds when they hit a three in my eye. I, I just went. I planked. I brought back planking after that. Uh, but I, I stood up, got back to my seat. Jake waited an appropriate amount of time, gave me the handshake, and then he went in for the hug. And the hug I was not ready for. The hug I could not handle mm. in that moment. I fully expected the hug to come, but it was it was much worse in the moment than I had even prepared myself for. Did you tell um, him it was going to be okay? No. What did you say? When you I gave thought him it was the a hug, great series. Oh. And it wasn't that great of a series. I still maintain. It was a good series. I still maintain. It wasn't that great. It's I, a good series. I, stop it, Jay. You're right. It was a good series. I maintain that if that empty net goal goes in on Monday, Over. that the, the Capitals win that series. No. It's, it's <laughs> Jake inches. agrees. Stop it, Jake. Please stop it. <laughs> it Can is just, a game Jake, of inches. Jake, do me a favor. It would make me feel But You want me to feel better, right? Of course. It would make me feel good if you were an asshole to me about this. I can't do it. Please, that's what I need right it. now. I can't do it. How, Jake? Come on, please. Just say one mean thing. Be like the better team won. Your team stunk at Game Six. Oh, he didn't even mean it. He didn't mean that's, it. I feel it's not natural. I feel what do you want me to do? It's no, I, not natural. I feel better. Okay, just ready? Saying. Yeah. Your fans were not locked in in the third period. Oh. And you agreed with that. Oh. It's two, two, what six happened? minutes left. Mm -hmm. They start doing the wave in an elimination no. game. And I'm like, PFT. I go to PFT. This is going to result in a Panthers goal. Your fans don't care right now. Wow. Yeah. And was, he's like, yeah, you're right. And they bad. scored a minute later. It was bad. bad we, we, did the wave, we did the wave and we saw it coming. Jake and I both agreed in that moment. Like, this is not, this is not a good omen for us. No. If it's, you know, like... I don't know if it's the 30th game of the season or yeah, something sure. like that in the second two, period. Two, Spice six, it up in January. I, it, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not an anti-wave guy. I think the wave's fun the sometimes. Time. But you got you got to pick your moments. I think that was started by an agent of chaos. Wow. I think that was started by a Panthers fan that snuck in. The wow. five of us there. The five, yeah, all five of you guys. Well, yeah. no different from what it's like in Sunrise. And oh, I, it was, that it was, was bad. Me. Oh, the game's been selling out. That was me. Yeah, a lot of red, a lot of red sweaters in the crowd down there. Yeah, red and navy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, I, I, I had accepted it at that point. I was like, this is not going to work out. Vernon Davis was like two seats over from us. Yeah. You could see all the blood drain out of his face too. He knew it was coming. Yams. We had, we was, had, was your boy Kodak there? Uh, I did not see Kodak. I was looking for I don't him. Know. And he DM'd me before the game. He's like, hey, you want to link up? Wait, and he DM'd you? Have a grilled cheese? Yeah. That rocks. Yeah. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, me and Kodak like this. Me, Meek Mill, Kodak, best friends, all three of us. 
Um, no, he didn't DM me. <laughs> yeah, Come no, on, that's Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That, was, that was one of those little cap. situations that Bubba was so pumped to maybe be like one away from Kodak. <laughs> the, they let yourself believe that. The yeah. time you took a picture with Uzi was like one of the best days of my yeah, life. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was like, like there's a chance I might meet him. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mean comment. Another mean comment. Oh, oh, oh now you're just unloading oh, the clip. Okay. All right, yeah. yeah. I, what just happened was I poked a little hole in the dam, mm -hmm. and now it's all flooding out. Let's go. Well, I want to do what you asked me to do. Yeah, yeah, do it. PFT was wearing a Caps hat, a Caps shirt, a Caps shoes, and his Lucky Caps jeans. I bought a Panther shirt at the NHL store the day before and ended his season. Wow. Shake the fuck up, Jake. That's I mean, it's, yeah, all, go ahead, it's memes, all true. Memes chime in. Jake also gave PFT a game puck. Oh, that's oh, so yeah. nice. Another little story. There was a crack in between the bench. Again, fortunate for first row behind the bench. There was a crack in between the bench and our seat. My phone beginning of second period. I was taking off my shirt for the bikini. My phone falls off my lap into the crack. The usher's like, we can rip apart the glass after the game, but you have to wait. And then when they got my phone after the game, there was a puck there, too. Wow. So, so you gave him a puck. I gave him a puck, a and he threw puck. it, and it almost hit an usher oh, yeah. man. in the I, middle of the concourse. Well, I didn't want it. I didn't want the, the losing puck. <laughs> That's very nice That's of you. Just, yeah. It's just a, a memory of pain that you tried to give me. It was it was bad, but you know what? This Tom Wilson being out the entire series, it was just not our year to begin with. So Sounds like an excuse. Jake, shut the fuck up. I have a spin zone for you, <laughs> I, have I know, I know, I know. For you. And, and, and I love Jake. I love him to death, and he knows that this is all coming from a place love of love too. deep down inside. But it was it was tough. And then after the game, we went out to a bar, and uh, I just got, I got obliterated at this bar. Just, like, absolutely <laughs> drowned myself. I ordered the biggest drink. Uh, it was, like, I think they call it, like, a mega mule. It was a uh, Kiev mule, but it was about seven times the size of a normal one. And I drank almost all of it by myself. Lost my jeans. I lost my pants. Maybe in the for bar. the better. So they, they just belong to the city right now. Somebody in Washington, D.C. has my oversized pants. And that's just, I, you know, gonna, you leave everything on the ice in the last game. I'm going to take a wild guess and say they just threw them out. No, <laughs> no. No, no, <laughs> definitely. Sounds not. like these are sweet. That's a piece of DC. Do you think the boobs history. are just in the security office of Capital One? Yeah, Arena that guy's until... horny. He yeah. probably took him home. Well, yeah. fucking... also, how how does someone who's a fan of this show like try to do that to yeah. us? Mm -hmm. He robbed. Shame on that person. He robbed everyone. I'm mm -hmm. suspending that security guard. You're listening right now. You seem like a nice You're guy. scumbag. But. You're suspended for two episodes listening to part of my take. Mm -hmm. You know summer. what? I hope that we get a situation where we have the same thing happen in that same arena and you try to confiscate my own personal breasts and then I sue you for life. <laughs> there was a, another security guard that came over, I think, before overtime started, and he made us put our shirts on, even though we had we were, I was covering the hell? two out of my four nipples. So it if wasn't you were a hot obscene. chick... It would have been fine. Exactly. This is bullshit. It's tough being a guy sometimes. Uh, guys getting persecuted. I have a spin zone for you. All right, hit me. Uh, you're not a Maple Leafs fan. That's true. So the well, other, I kind of was this year. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, but the the Maple Leafs, the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, lose Game Seven. That was the other notable. We had a bunch of Game Sevens. Uh, the Bruins lost to the, to the Hurricanes. Um, the Edmonton Oilers won while everyone was sleeping. I assume everyone was sleeping very late at night. Connor McDavid, but the uh, Maple Leafs, that was the fifth time in a row, five years in a row, that they lost a winner go home game. The only reason I'm not saying game seven is because that stupid bubble where it was a five game series, they lost in the fifth game. Uh, it is so, so bad for them. They've done it every single which way. They've, they haven't won a series since 2004. They now will be drafting players in this year's draft. They will be born after they last won a playoff series, which is incredible. That's good, though. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, in a way. Yes, you're right. Because in a way. I, I usually their history. I usually don't put any stock into like the old stats that are like, well, the Maple Leafs when they play against the Kings in the Stanley Cup Finals haven't won a game since like X Y Z or whatever it is. Probably never happened actually. But you know, like the ones that they always bring out of like the history between these two teams. Yeah. I don't really put that much stock in it, but it's got to be good for Toronto having players that have absolutely no comprehension yes. whatsoever about the history of yes. the team. Yes, it is. I mean, they have now, they're, they're 10 straight, they have 10 straight losses in games that could close out a series. Think about that. So in the last five years, they've been up 3-2 twice and 3-1 another time. They were up 3-1 last year against the Canadiens. They have, they have had 10 straight losses in closeout games, 
And that's not even throwing in the, uh, like, all their recent terrible, terrible string of luck in the last five years. I completely forgot. I went back and I looked at their playoff history. Um, that that game seven in 2013 against the Bruins when they were up four to two with two and a half minutes left and gave up two goals in 31 seconds that's, and then lost in overtime. Yeah, that's tough. It's too. tragic upon tragic. They were fighting each other, which I'm actually – I was thinking about it. I'm a fan of that. I think that – at some point, you just have to fight each other. To sh- iron sharpens iron. Uh, in the concourse, there was videos. And then they also had the quote, which was kind of taken out of context, but it's still, I ran with it. Most people ran with it. It was a, a real quote. Um, let me let me just pull it up real quick. Uh, uh, shit. If I'm the Maple Leafs, I got to release a statement. I got to yeah. do the Tampa Bay Lightning thing yeah. and put out a very, the most sad pathetic statement about how bad your team is yeah like we're ne- we're going to learn from this you'll never see a team work as hard as we do yes exactly uh sheldon keith said after the series they got a lot more respect in the post series handshake line from the lightning than after previous losses that's good that's improvement huge it's baby He's, steps he did go on to say we're not in the respect game we're in the winning game we got to find a way to do that so that is the full quote but just saying we got a lot more respect hey that's a win you guys People are respecting how you lose. They won game eight of they the series. They won game eight. They won the, yeah. We walked away. Basically, undefeated the li- in game eight. The Lightning, Jake Marston. Yeah, exactly. They're like, we, yeah, you guys played a hell. You guys were way better than we thought. Jake, did you did you plan on on giving me the full hug, or was that a spur of the moment thing? No, that's, that's out of no, his playbook. No, spur of the moment. No, yeah. that's out of his playbook. A lot of people were saying, like, oh, he's doing the muscleman thing to you. I was like, no, no, no. I think this was just. Like Jake wanted to hug me. In also, yeah. the players do that too. Not all of them, but some of them who have a lot more respect than usual. Like they go in for the hug. Too. You were giving Definitely double the goal. The goalies. You're I feel doing like always yeah. do double respect. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So much respect. Yeah. Um, and then we had the Rangers just beat the Penguins in overtime. Memes because Hank is in Boston. Memes is is uh, behind the camera right now. Memes. I have not seen someone uh, root so much against the team. Than what you're doing with the Rangers. Every time we watch a Rangers game, you're rooting so hard. I thought you were a Penguins fan for a minute, and then I realized, no, no, no this is just he's a diehard Islanders fan. He hates the Rangers. So where are you at right now? Uh, big Canes fan now. Uh, mm-hmm. Canes at four. They can't lose at home. Raising so, Canes. Uh, so you just really like despise the Rangers. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan <laughs> no, of fans. Not a fan of anything they do. They you just, know they're they're, they're th- terrible people. The, the, <laughs> their fans are are literally just the exact same people as Islanders. Yeah, fans. they're your neighbors. Eh, eh, no, no, garbage. <laughs> I I don't think we ever mentioned this, but when we did the uh, congrats off in our in our chat, uh, memes was like, "Is anybody gonna congratulate me on the Rangers losing?" Yeah, right. Yeah. That it's it's it, I can tell. You could tell when you're around someone. And it's like very personal. And I love it. I, I appreciate anyone who has that type of hate, but it threw me off because I was I was very confused with how much you were cheering for the Penguins. So you're just a can't like if the Rangers win the Stanley Cup, rank that on worst things that could happen to you as a sports fan. So Patriots winning, which is like my whole life. Yep. You're a Jets fan. Yep. And then so much so he wouldn't shake Julian Edelman's hand when he came in the first yeah. time. And then which was actually a hilarious move. He just was like, Yep, all right, hello. Me and my dad said to each other, we're like, the Rangers are going to win, and it's just going to suck, and all their fans are just going to rub it in the face. What what would you rather have, the Rangers win a Stanley Cup or the butt fumble happen all over again? Mm, Good question. Rather kill myself. (laughs) (laughs) Good answer. (laughs) Butt fumble. Okay. Oh, this is when you know it's really bad that you can't. You're torn. Yeah, no, he's having legitimate... Conversation yeah. inside of his own head. You're Rangers, Rangers. 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 Okay. That's worse. And and you yeah, know, we can't start over with the butt fumble. Okay, yeah, and you know though, um, as part of oh, he's second guessing <laughs> that now. As part of your job, if the Rangers win a cup, you got to tweet about that yeah. a lot, like a lot, a lot. I am unbiased, so mm-hmm. I will tweet it out. I think. I think. <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, yeah, very unbiased. You're like one of those. Yeah. Um, you know, like Facebook had to. There, there's like people who ha- had to basically be a moderator on Facebook and take down like violent videos and stuff and they all got like PTSD. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen to you if the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, it's like the crying face with the happy, yeah, happy face, face on the mask. Yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Actually, Tell it to us like a meme. I think yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I think if the, if the Rangers win the Stanley Cup memes, you gotta go cover the parade for us. Yeah. Oh, man. oh yeah. Fair. I yeah. I actually am gonna put you on a on, on a tweet count too. Like I want I want like 
a hundred positive tweets on the Rangers. I want us to be a Rangers like I, part of my take Twitter account and Instagram will be Rangers Central. I got a I got a <laughs> massive future on these Rangers. Yeah, so, so you got to cover the that, team, right? Go Canes. Yeah. <laughs> no, go Rangers. Yes, go Rangers. yes, you have to. If it's I mean, listen, we might. Yeah, I think I'm going to be rooting for the Rangers now it, too. It kills him so much. It's like you with Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it's I know. I can, I can tell, yeah. and it's just I love it. I I appreciate it so much. I like th- this is what sports is about. You got to hate. When your team's not in it, you got to hate. You got to find a way to hate. I hate him so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well said. Just, just jump on board that they're better without Lundquist train. That's that a good is true. one. Because it's a nice little backhanded compliment. He's a very overrated. Yep, goalie. no rings. No rings. I went, I actually, Bubba, uh, I know you're a big fan of his. I actually did go to his house one time. Who? Lundquist's house. Why am I a big fan of it? Oh, I just feel like you like Kodak Black. You like all these big celebs that we run the same circles with. But I went to his house one time. That's a very big stretch right there. No, but I went to his house one time, and I was like, hey, I'm pretty thirsty. Do you have anything to drink? He couldn't give me anything to drink. Can you believe that? Yeah. Uh, You're fucking with me again. No. No, no, no. Ask him why. Why? Because he doesn't have any cups. Bam. I got it. Yeah. (laughs) That was... Uh, Frank Fleming original. That, that's, yeah. a, that's a Frank the Tank show. I mean the 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 OV with the uh, bag of golf the clubs. Golf the best. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean that happened for like that ten actually, years straight. That's why we have to. That's why we to put a cap on this whole podcast. That's why we have to cherish Chris Paul and what he brings to us because yeah. narratives that uh, we can just believe in, even though the player is very very good Hall of Famer. They're just so much fun. Mm-hmm. They're also, great. I never got the OV golf clubs thing. Like what. He's not a golfer. Like, have you ever? Oh, he what about golfs. What about Ovi screams? He probably killed Putin. Like the the Caps losing probably sent Putin over the edge. Ovi, the first time he ever played golf, had a hole in one on his first hit. There's, on his first hit? Yeah, no at, way. That's true. Look that Jong-un up. Un thing? Yeah, no, I swear to God, it's on tape. What? Okay. Yeah, I first time he's ever, no way ever that's possible. Ever. I don't know if it was his first time ever hitting the ball, but the first golf outing he ever went on, he hit a hole. On, his, on the fir- on first hole, wait, par, par three? threes are not hole one. <laughs> I bet yeah, Billy believes too that solid. Kim Jong yeah, got guess, like a third. No, dude, it, it was posted to. But a par three never leads off. That's very rarely hole one. Let me find. I it. would say never. I would. Say, oh, a par, par three yeah, course. Or, yeah, or, uh, or pitching putt. Also, shout out Albert Pujols for pitching. No, mm-hmm. no, this is, no. It was scratch that from the record. It was very cool. That right. Fat fuck. It was very cool. According to Golf.com, Alexander Ovechkin made a hole in one during his first ever round. Okay, okay. that's a little According different. According to Golf.com, you said the first swing he ever, he ever took made with the golf club. First swing, first hole, hole in one. boom. You hole know this one. podcast is recorded. And I know, I know your words. <laughs> I there was a little hyperbole there, but it's still crazy. The first time he ever went golf, that is crazy. Hole in one. That is crazy. So speaking I agree. of Ovechkin and golf. He's a really good golfer. He's a great golfer. I don't know okay. if he's a good golfer, but he's a lucky golfer. Oh, he got a hole in one on his first swing. Yeah. He's a good golfer. But sources are saying. By the way, Billy definitely, uh, he did report that Vladimir Putin was dead. Low key. Off the air. No, but he called it, he said it low key, so that means that there could be a chance he's not. He's our John Cena. Yeah. Low key, I, Putin I did, might be dead. I shot him down. Yeah. Low key. Low, low key. key. Low key. What? When does it become high key? When he's when he's high key dead. <laughs> oh, he's got to be dead to be high key dead, or wouldn't he not just be dead? Well, like just just stuff going on. I think when The Rock tweets about it, he's high key dead. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good show, everyone. Um, also, the Flames and Stars are playing, but there we go. There was your mention. There are a lot of why, people that why, this why does Shaq have a cowboy hat on right now? Because uh, the Mavericks. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And the women, San Antonio. <laughs> Yes, yes. Sure. Charles Barkley did say that once. Six. <laughs> Several times. Charles Barkley, not Shaq, did Churros. say that. Yes. All right, numbers. What's Chris Paul's number? Three. Six. Three. 25. I'm going to go with 13, 13 again. It's out of play. Oh, it's out of play. Unless we put it back okay, in. No, oh, no. is Chris Paul 13? CP3. CP3. But is he? Did he is he where? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to go with. No, he just chokes. 28. Uh, What do you got, Memes? Did Billy pick 69? 69. No, 68. Okay. No, he's three. He is three. I don't know why I thought he was three. Oh, USA. Yeah. There it is. I'm so smart at sports. 28. That's totally what I meant. 18. Oh, my God. You made me win it with a different number. You said win it with a d- different team. That's my number, and then I changed wow. it. Wow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wow. Wait, wait, Hank probably would have taken 18. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He loves that. Raccoons have thumbs. Love really? Me. Yeah, watch them 
Just Google raccoons washing their hands. It's actually freaking nuts. Love you guys. That's crazy.